Good morning from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, if you can hear me and if I sound okay, can I get a wee wee in the comment section? Um, can I get a wee 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 wee? It's a bit, it's a bit too much for him to say, buddy. So we're gonna stick with wee wee. Wee wee. If you can hear me, oh, Obsidian Moon, first up with the wee wee on the Twitch. Oh, we got Z oh Jilu perhaps on Twitch as well. Hello. Oh, we got a wee 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 wee. Wheat wheat, Twitch is pouring in. Oh, we got Awkward Tea, good vibes from Dallas coming in on YouTube. We got lots of people from YouTube and Twitch. Hi to Captain Tingo, Angela Chan, Rebecca G. We've got Moonshki Ash Branson. It's going so fast. Crafting with care, Astrid, Maytan, Sailor Surya, clap those hands, Silent Grace 7. We got Daniel, WTML1. We have got Petri, Moem, Pickle Juice, Dave X Machine 32, Chaotic Bunny, Orange Ashmer, Space Junk, Amanda, we have Blushy Grotesque Panda. We got a lot of people. Where is everybody tuning in from uh, around the globe? And it, by the way, last time it was a little bit delayed uh, because everyone's coming in at the same time and then it kind of figured itself out. So, okay, we've got um, Yorkshire here. We have Iowa, a late night hello to Katya in Prague. We have Idaho. We have Texas, we have England in the house, Missouri, Norway, U Nur Norway, <laughs> hello Norway. We have the UK, Rhode Island. Uh, we have New Zealand, San Francisco, New York, Arizona, DC, Paris, Vancouver, BC, Calgary, Wales, Austria. It's going much faster than I can read. It's not true. Virginia, Texas, Sweden, Nebraska, San Antonio, Nerdway, Georgia, USA, Philippines, California, Oregon, California, Australia, DC, Texas, Vermont, more Texas, New Jersey, Sweden, <sighs> lots and lots of people. Montreal, the first Canadian I've seen, Auckland, New Zealand, Connecticut, Adele, Adelaide, Australia, she got there in the end. Las Vegas, ancient founder. We got Scotland, Paisley, you made it. What time is it for you? Well, thank you everybody for, uh, for joining this live stream. Lots of, uh, lots of exciting things going on as my brain begins to awaken, uh, but it's quite hard, you know, if I do a nighttime stream, a lot of you guys in other parts of the world are asleep, and those of us in Australia and New Zealand and Europe are like, we're all awake, so it's nice to be able to do something where people can actually, yeah, exactly, catch a stream for once is what I always see in people being like, I'm finally catching a stream. Is everything okay with the sound? You guys can hear everything okay. Just let me know at any point if anything seems too loud or, you know, too quiet. I'm gonna take us, um, into the island for those of you who have never played Animal Crossing. I don't know if I'd call it a video game as so much like a world that you create. It's like this island you just get put onto where you have like nothing and you have to build everything from scratch. So it's up to you how you want to play it. Uh, it has a very like calm kind of vibe and it's matched up with the real time of the world. So it's 9.04 a.m. in Japan. It's 9.04 in my Animal Crossing world and autumn is starting in Japan and autumn is starting on my island. So I've got leaves falling and everything goes in like real time. So what I'm trying to do is prep my island for the winter because there's gonna be snow soon, you know? Uh, and also we're going to be visiting E-Cycle Land. And uh, this stream has been sponsored by Dell and Intel, which is very exciting. Ya gal, King Kogi, Kogi! We can eat Kogi, we eat! <laughs> So this stream has been sponsored and it's been sponsored for, I think, a very cool reason. So we're talking a little bit about e-waste and e-cycling. And um, if you haven't seen the first stream, it's a bit of a treat to see the island that they've created because it's amazing. Here we go. I'm gonna take us into the into the big old screen. Here we go, everyone. See, see you in the top corner here. I'm so small. Oh, it looks, it looks uh, just like me when I wake up in the morning, when I wake up in my bunny hood and my, and my hoodies and I'm in slippers right now. So this is, this is my house. I've got my little spurgy mat. Mm, spurgy. And um, it's an aqua house with a pink door, which I think is very appropriate. Uh, Allison M says, what's the temperature in Tokyo today? Uh, that is a good question. Looking outside my window, let's find out, shall we? It's, it's getting kind of more uh, balmy and cooler around here. Uh, it's coming in at 13 degrees right now Celsius. Anyone who knows how to convert that to Fahrenheit, please, please help me. Yeah, so it's uh, getting autumn-y. Look at all the beautiful autumn leaves that are falling about here. I personally, when I play Animal Crossing, I always put my character into pajamas before I tuck her into bed because it only feels right to me. 
so I think I need to change her out of that. But yeah, so this is my the, the front entrance way of my home. I've got this little area here that I'm prepping for the winter. The last time I was streaming, I got this lawn chair and I love it because now I can be like, get out my lawn to any of the, um, the villagers that come by. I, I can just be like, wait, can I, can I zoom in? Yeah, yeah, I can be like, get out child on my lawn, get off my lawn. So it's my, it's my like little old person area with this uh, excellent lawn chair. And I have a Barbie, a barbecue, everybody. Look at this. If you touch it, it actually works. A little bit of smoke puffs out. So I'm starting to winterize. Before this was kind of like an area that was a bit summery. I had a swimming pool, but I want to kind of lay down like a cozy area for the winter. I've got a kotatsu, everybody. A little kotatsu over here. Isn't it so cute? And a tea set. And this, this area is going to be covered in snow eventually, right? Galaxy says, I don't know if I could make eye contact with my villagers. I've been gone for too long. Uh, yeah, they do tend to be like, where have you been? And they kind of guilt trip you. And when we talk about villagers, um, these villagers are not played by actual people. They randomize on your island. And so you can't really um, choose who you're going to get particularly. Oh, Paisley, you've been a member for five months now. She just got a message. Perks of joining King Kogi Kingdom on YouTube. Thank you for the spoons today. Definitely will need that. Um, Jennifer Holloway says, I can't seem to get orange, apple, or pear trees. I also want the sakura trees, but can't figure that out. The sakura trees only come in the springtime and you can't choose it. It just like shows up on your island. One, one of these trees will become sakura. And the other trees you got to get by going to different islands. So you got to go like fly off to different, not other people, but just like made by the computer islands and then shake their freaking pears and be like, you're coming with me. So um, yeah, that's the kind of things they do. Yeah, I definitely should take a picture here. You're right. This is this is very cute. We're gonna we're gonna zoom on in. But I'm in my pajamas still. I completely forgot to change. How embarrassing. Well, for now. Ah yes. Enjoying a delightful afternoon. Uh, I also forgot to leave the thing. I have a new villager on my island. Uh, they just arrived, and it is a gothy, gothy villager. And so I changed the whole area around his house to have gothy black flowers. I cannot wait for you guys to meet him. Um, yeah, it's pretty great. So let's get, let's get out of pajamas because I am wearing my inside slippers, which is a bit embarrassing. Whoa, the live stream just suddenly went really, really fast and came blowing, blowing past at a massively fast speed. There we go. A defender of justice said they just caught a tarantula on my island. I've never been able to catch a tarantula. They're quite scary. Uh, I'm always running from them. I think I'm going to start with a coffee, which is the right thing to do. My wall has become an explosion of these little tiny characters. It's, it's gotten a bit out of control, one might say. But if you personally enjoy these little alien dudes jamming out to music, it has not gotten out of control. So really it's just um, perspective, one might say. Look at this. They're amazing. I've even got a Kogi in the corner. See up top in the corner? <laughs> Let's do a little bit of jamming out. Ready? Okay, I'm supposed to be changing. Uh, instead, I'm jamming out on the piano. Yes, the, con the concert to uh, the excellent concert. Toasted Biscuits, member for five months as an explorer. My island is so empty. Yours is inspiring me to pick up my Switch again soon. Yes, there is something where I think, and let me know if you guys feel this way, you feel kind of stressed out about revisiting your island because there's so much to do. Because this game is happening in real time, you'll decorate your island for Halloween and be like, I love it. And then you return a couple weeks later and you're like, I have to take everything down by hand. There's no like button that can just wipe everything from scratch. So you're literally gardening in your garden in this kind of meta meta way you're like removing things from your garden you're weeding things and you're like this is just like real life but if you don't let yourself get stressed by the pressure of it and you go you know what this is just a way to zone out then it's okay but if you feel like i have to show this to people and and you know what are people gonna think then you can get kind of stressed out like it's almost like a real life house so you gotta kind of you know be careful that way otherwise i think it's quite stressful yes allison have the musical prowess right um, I'm going to change out of my pajamas, which I've been saying for like 20 minutes. And, uh, and then I think we're going to go visit the eCycle Land Island. We're going to go through a dream, the dream address this time. And I have the dream address in my info box. That way you guys can actually visit it too. And then when we do that, uh, because a lot of people can't stay for the whole stream. So at least you can see it. And then we can come back to me attempting to fix up my island. 
Oh no, she's almost naked. What to wear today? What to wear today? It is autumny. Um, we could go with a more of a detective look uh, if we want to today. So all these outfits you had to kind of like find and buy and pick and so it takes a long time. Oh, what's that? It looks like my dapper Harry Potter robes. Um, I actually do have a Harry Potter robe, but um, <gasps> sailor shirt, sailor chibi shirt. Of course, they don't call it that in the game. They're like sailor's tea. We all know that it's sailor moon. Hello, lovebird. Hello, lily moon. First live stream, you made it. Very nice to see you here. Toasted Biscuit says, yeah, I took everything off my island to redo the whole thing. I felt so stressed to redo it again. Yeah, it is. it can be stressful. Captain Tingle, what time is it in Japan? It is currently 9, 11 a.m. in Japan. So it is, uh, it is early. Well, I had to get up quite early to make sure that I could get all my coffee and all my stretching in. Hmm. Okay, I think maybe I feel like a hugge, something cozy today. Oh, this is so cool. It's a Viking top. Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it cool? I feel very like, look at this outfit. But I also have a lot, it's very difficult to choose. I think I just basically choose things based on what I would want to wear. Tiny Quark, Tiny Quoka, Quarka? Wait, I know what this is. It's that amazing little animal. I have the um, Quoka, I can never know how to pronounce it, little animal that's like smiling all the time. I have the Kalimba. I started playing Animal Crossing at the start of the pandemic when I was living with my parents, moved out after the year, forgot to bring my Switch, and it's been two years since I visited my island. Oh no. Oh no. Hello, Abby Cruz. Hello, Wendy. Nice to see you guys. See, I always feel like I go straight Canadian and like I'm supposed to put on something different and then I just go straight up uh, Canadian every time. It's like I can't, I cannot shake the Canadian from me, y'all. Oh, look at how, look at how cozy this looks. You know what I mean? So cozy looking. Oh, boots. I'm a little lumberjack going on a lumberjack adventure. Although I am going to be um, probably taking photos on eCycle land. So do I want to look like a lumberjack? The answer is yes, I do want to look like a lumberjack. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with this and maybe a little backpack or something. Maybe put on a little, little backpack, little maple leaf bag, make it real Canadian. Yes, this feels right. Oh, it's my mom. Are you putting up a Christmas tree? I am gonna put up a Christmas tree, mom. I'm gonna put up a Christmas tree starting in December though. So I'm gonna wait until December. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna go with this. Feels pretty good as a Canadian to be wearing this outfit. Think I own this exact outfit myself. Now I'm going to be going to the dreamland, which is where you have to like go to bed and sleep. But I also have um, a dreamland ticket. So my question is if I can just immediately use it right now, or do I, can I just go to bed and, and use it? That's, that's what I'd like to know everybody. Cause I kind of feel like I put on shoes. Do I want to go upstairs into my bedroom with shoes on? So Japanese of me. Anyone who has um, <laughs> advice on this. <laughs> yes, my Canadian heart, Black Hyatt the third. That's right, the Canadian uniform. Ancient Flounder says, I haven't been to my new leaf villager, village on 3DS in like four to five years. Isabella has to be very upset. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So this is my bedroom. The last time I went to um, E-Cycle Island, basically, I actually think it's a very, a very clever and, and a good way to kind of, it's quite meta if you think about it. So basically, Intel and Dell, they've created this E-Cycle land where you can take your rusted parts in Animal Crossing world and you can exchange it. You can E-Cycle it into something new. And so I recycled it and got this entire game desk, which is crazy. I'm like, this is better than the desk that I have in real life, which is how it gets uh, so meta. But the reason they're doing it is not just to be like, oh, it's Animal Crossing and E-Cycle thing. They're trying to promote that you can e-cycle your e electronic stuff in real life as well. So if you are in the States, you can take any products you have. It doesn't have to specifically be Dell or Intel oriented stuff. And you can either send them in for credit um, or you can go to like a Goodwill and exchange it. And if you can't like actually exchange it because it's like a thousand years old, they will still e-cycle it for you for free. So they're trying to kind of like do this in Animal Crossing in order to promote what's going on in the real world. So I think that's quite a, a clever way because even in Animal Crossing, a world invented by humans, we've created e-waste in Animal Crossing because we get these rusted parts and it's kind of like what am I gonna freaking do with it so so it was pretty cool if you missed the first one this is uh, this is how I got it but yeah I, I really like that idea to be able to promote this kind of thing in a real world where you're collecting stuff and in the old world where 
I look to you, mom. Drawers of old laptops or uh, old uh, phones and stuff. <laughs> She's like, don't shame me on your stream. <laughs> okay, I think I go to sleep and then I meet the dream lady who's gonna take us to the dreamland. This is what I, I think is gonna happen. I could be incorrect, but I'm wearing shoes on my futon. Faux pas. Yeah, it's an interesting way to promote it, right? So it's kind of like something that's really happening in the real world, but it's also affecting my dream world. Oh, here she is. Yep. The first time I met Luna, I was like, what in the actual heck is going on? Welcome, welcome. The binary fields are teeming with beautiful dreams. How may I be of assistance? I want to dream. Yeah, Sailor Sura is like, I totally have two old laptops hiding uh, on my closet. Yeah. Then I shall connect to the internet to initialize a dream download. Yeah, so I think the whole idea is that we all have this stuff that we're, we're hoarding in our houses and closets and, and we don't really know what to do with it. So they're trying to say, hey, here's what you can do with it. We need to start uh, e-cycling these parts because they're ending up in landfills. And, but you know what? They have an amazing little tour that will explain this better than me. From here on, you will find a uniquely pleasant or exciting dream. Revisiting it will be simple as dreams you visited recently can now be selected from a list and enjoyed again. Revisit a dream. Shall I prepare your dream? I'd like to search by at dream address. This is my first time using a dream address. Okay, okay, here we go. I have it written down. Wait, I have this written down. Okay, 68. 68, you guys can also visit this island as well. This is not just uh, exclusive to, to only me. 68, 70. 4192 or 8474. By the way, do you think she's an anteater? Luna? I think she's an anteater. It's my personal opinion. Okay, she's browsing the library. <laughs> Okay, L-E-T, oh my God, environmental scientist here. Super excited to see you bring attention to e-waste problem. Another reason you're one of my favorite influencers. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, L-E-T. I'm very picky about uh, the type of things that I uh, support. You know, even if people are like, hey, do you want to sponsor this deal? And I'm like, no, I don't really like this. But this was something that I was like, I will actually get behind this because you definitely have too many landfills now. That's like our biggest, you know, thing that we're all just recycling through quickly, not even recycling, right? We're like getting new phones and upgrading phones. Not me, my phone's a pretty old model, but I do have old phones sitting at home, so. E-cycle land. Yep, that's where we're going. Oh, that's so cool. All right, so a lot of people have been like, Martina, what's your dream island address? This is what we're all talking about, right? So I give you my dream island address and then you guys can visit my island, I'm guessing, when I'm not around. Is that the point of it? You could see all my shameful piles of twigs and rocks that I haven't picked up though. <laughs> Captain Dingo, I would not trust Luna to watch over my body while I'm dreaming. <laughs> Hi, blue-eyed kitten. Thanks, Obsidian Moon, for putting the dream code up there. Yeah, e-waste is a serious problem in the day and age. Exactly. JPEG therapy. Okay, okay. Now, open your eyes. You are now in a deep slumber, dreaming peacefully of an island named E-Cycle Land. When you wish to awaken from this dream, you need only lie down in this bed, and I will take care of the rest. And with that, may your dream of E-Cycle Land be a sweet one. Oh. I'm just here? <laughs> amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> so that's really cool. So that means that when... Okay, now I get why you guys are like, when will you give us your recycle? Not recycle, your um, dream address. I get it now. So you can come to my island, yeah, and putter about and stuff like that. Okay, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a photo. I've, I've made it, everyone. I've made it. <laughs> this old brain is still functioning. Hi, Shauna. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Good morning from Malaysia. Thank you for saying hello. I will definitely share my dream address then, okay? But you will have to be not judgmental of all my shameful piles of, of rocks and things that I, that I don't pick up, okay? 
Hello, uh, Chiasto Chan, welcome. Thank you, Kwangi. I'm having a wonderful morning so far. It is 20 minutes in. I've had my coffee. We are here on East Cycle Land Island. Um, if you're just tuning in now, we're going to be visiting this island at the very beginning in case some of you have got ahead to bed afterwards. This is a sponsored stream from Intel and Dell, um, but it's sponsored for, I think, a very good reason. We're talking about e-waste and all these kind of problems, and they have built. I've already been here in the last stream, but it's amazing what they've done. Like, they've created this entire beautiful e-cycle land. Look at this. Turns on and off. Okay, is this, so it's kind of, uh-huh, everything's roped off so you can only go a certain, um, a certain place, right? Very smart of them. That's very smart of them. I left a message here last time. I wonder if it's still here. Oh, I left a post and I was trying to type, and it took me forever. <laughs> Who's got brick phones from the past 20 years? Ours don't even have batteries, Sam and Nippon. Yeah, my granddaddy had a, a phone that was like in a briefcase it was so big it was like one of those ones that you like the huge ones you know Ooh. okay so by the way these mean that they have a five-star island this special lily the valley and i have two on my island but i recently found out that you're supposed to earn it by having a five-star island however my island is not five-star but my friend let me dig them up on her island and i didn't know that that was like I guess an Animal Crossing faux pas because I love Lily the Valley. They remind me of my house in, in, in Etobicoke. So anyways, um, if you see my Lily of the Valley, they are Shame Valley lilies. They are not ones that I have earned. <laughs> um, you can leave posts on the bulletin board because I have definitely left posts before. Okay, so this is the guided tour. And last time what I did was, you guys can actually scan it as well. I'm gonna zoom in so you can get a better a better look at it. But basically, this is a real QR code on the screen, which is quite cool. I've already scanned this tour before, so this time around, I have it downloaded and ready to go. So we can kind of go along the guided tour, and then that way you can, it's, it's really cute. And if you see the guided tour, it's actually a YouTube video with this little cute guy named Microchip. So I'm gonna press play on this, and I'm just gonna see if you guys can hear it properly. So let me know if you can hear it properly, and then I'll continue playing it. Okay, you ready? Greetings, villagelings. Could you hear that? Greetings, villagelings. Yep, does it sound okay? Okay, hopefully it sounds okay. So I'm gonna press play on this and um, we are going to take the little guided tour and then afterwards I'm gonna explore the house which I didn't finish doing last time. Okay, perfect, here we go. Great Welcome to our Intel eCycle Land tour. My name's Microchip, and today I'll be your guide as we talk about electronic waste, yeah. e waste for short, and what we can do about it. From the rusted parts you find here to the e waste that we have in real life, I'll walk you through how we can make both worlds a better place. There's only one rule. When you hear this, That means it's time to move to the next station. No critters left behind. Excited? Me too. Let's get this show on the road. This time, this time I know where to go. Look at this, you guys. First things first. What even is e-waste? Anyone? A anyone? N no? Oh, well, I'll tell ya. Much like the rusted parts cluttering your pockets, E-waste is old or unusable electronics that end up cluttering our junk drawers mm -hmm. and ultimately landfills. Did you know 54 million tons of e-waste is generated every year worldwide? That's equivalent to the weight of 350 cruise ships. And e-waste released 580 million metric tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere in 2020 alone. That's the equivalent of 73 million U.S. homes energy for one year. Yeesh. And as tech leaders, Intel believes it's their responsibility to find solutions Man. to clean up the mess that is e-waste through methods like... Oh, next station. E-cycling. Ever heard of it? Well, now you have. Look at this. That's what we do here. Turn your rusted parts into brand new shiny tech. That's e-cycling. 
When you e-cycle something, you're recycling electronic equipment in a safe, sustainable way, or reusing the materials to turn them into something so shiny well and new. Talk about a fun DIY project. <laughs> and when we reuse materials, we reduce our environmental footprint overall, helping make the world a greener place. How wonderful is that? Now that we're e-cycling experts, who's ready to play a game? To the next place. Step right up, folks. Look at this. Let's play Will <gasps> It E-Cycle. It's an entire game show. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> You're going to do great. First up, a computer monitor. Will it e-cycle? Will it e-cycle? <laughs> yes, you got it! How about cameras? Headphones? A radio? Will these e-cycle? Yes, yes, and... Yes, you're a pro! What about a fish? Mm. Will it e-cycle? <laughs> no, save those for blathers at the museum. How about chargers? TVs? Will these e-cycle? You can actually yes look, and yes on it. Just remember, if it has a plug, a charger, uses batteries, or has a chip like me in it, you can e-cycle it. Now that we know what e-waste is and isn't, let's see how easy e-cycling can actually be. Station four, here we come. So like that's a good way to remember it if it has a plug. So, now what? You've already made an impact by coming here, but what if you wanted to donate your rusted parts in real life? Here we go. Well, lucky for you, here at Intel, we've teamed up with some cool critters to help make e-cycling outside of this island easy, rewarding, and free. <laughs> no bells required. Our friends at Dell Technologies offer great it's options so cute, right? to help you e-cycle. For instance, with Dell, you can e-cycle any of your old devices no matter the brand. Eligible devices can be traded in for credit towards new electronics. And for those devices that aren't eligible, they'll e-cycle them for free. You can even e-cycle your old electronics through the Dell Reconnect program by Turn dropping off them off at a participating Goodwill. How else can you minimize e-waste? Try to choose electronics that are known for being long-lasting and are made from e-cycled components that can later be easily repaired, upgraded, and refurbished. Sounds easy enough, right? I can feel the positive impact already. Now, let's scoot on over to one last stop. The gift shop. Dun, 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 dun. I'll zoom in on this for you guys so you can visit this in the, in the store as well. <sighs> well, fellow change makers, our journey here is coming to a close. But your Come adventures in e-cycling are out. just beginning. I've had such a wonderful there. time being your tour guide today. You're welcome back anytime. So this isn't goodbye. It's just see you later. Let me get out of the way. Wasn't that nice? Wasn't that so well done? The last time I was streaming, someone said, it sounds like, you know, like Saturday morning cartoons, they'd always have like a message that's like, you know, make sure you don't throw your trash on the ground or like, you know, you should use this instead. Or, you know, if you want to help out people or don't do drugs or don't smoke or like all these kind of things, this is the kind of thing that I feel like it would be amazing in school, right? And I know that like, even as an adult who's playing Animal Crossing, there's a lot of information that I honestly did not know. And I do think that the whole idea is that you have all the stuff hanging around your house and you just don't know what to do with it. So you just don't do anything. Oh my gosh. You just don't do anything about it, right? So in the info box, there's actually some links and the links take you over to the eCycle Land link to Intel and they will have an area there that you can check to see if you have an eCycling area that's near you in your actual city or town. So because I don't know where everybody lives, make sure you use that link and then you can start either trading things in for credit bringing them to Goodwills or, you know, just getting them out of your house and out of your garage. And they have a whole bunch of little tiny, four simple steps to make sure that you know that you've like cleaned up your laptop, wiped off any information. And I'm gonna post about that a little bit later on. Um, but I, I think it's a really important message. I think we are all pretty much guilty of having these kind of things hanging around our house, right? Thanks, Jukes D. Yes, exactly, Ashbar Wolf. It's like Captain Planet, right? 
yeah, I want more educational Animal Crossing Islands now too as well, right? It's a really nice way. And I think they've made a, a really strong effort to bring the message to Animal Crossing in a way that makes sense because we did have all these um, chips hanging around, right? Like I had a million of these. Oh, you can't see your you can't see your inventory when you're on a dream one. I had so many uh, rusted parts hanging around and I honestly didn't know what to do with it. So it was exactly like real life, but in Animal Crossing, it was very meta. Oh, Defender of Justice said, I went through it alongside you and found out they have uh, Tia on their island. Oh, you were on um, the dream code already. So we're, we're dream coding at the same time. So they have this gift shop. And the last time I was here, I got a couple of the codes from the shop. I don't know if I'm, I'm going to be able to use my, um, can I use my wand when I'm on the island? You know, the magic bunny wand? <gasps> you can't. No. I made a really cute outfit with, um, with this little computer chip. How will, how do I, how will I use my bunny wand? You know, the bunny wand that changes your outfits and stuff. Yeah. Jedi master. It is really well done, right? So what is this? This is a, a nook, a nook stop point, but I guess a dream, a dream Island. I can't buy stuff, right? So how do I, is there any way to use my bunny wand? You guys, you guys can uh, let me know if, um, if you can use your bunny wand at all, because I wanted to change into my matching chip outfit and be like twinsies. But first, yeah, looking very, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can figure that out afterwards, but wow. How do they have all this stuff that's matching the color scheme as well? Do you see this? They've got Intel colored like, um, pretzels intel intel pretzels <laughs> it's it's really honestly whoever made this has been uh, looking into details right oh you can't use you can't use tools when you're on the okay you need to be on your own island okay well when i get back to my island i'll show you this little outfit i made it's very cute it has like the really cute little microchip um this little microchip here so he, this outfit I got, and you can also get it from their, from their shop. That's what that code is at the beginning. And, um, although they had a portal at the entrance, I think, I wonder if you can actually change into it, right? Everybody so much more knowledgeable than me. Um, so this kind of stuff like this Intel mat and all this stuff, you can go to the portal and you can use this code and visit their actual shop. And then you can download their um, patterns for the rug and for putting it on different like things or wallpaper or clothing, all that kind of stuff. I feel like anyone here who's a teacher and um, they want to do like a class, they want to explain something to their class. You just get covered in all the different kinds of swag and then you get the kids in class and like project it and go on the dream address and be like, let's talk about e-cycling and the entire thing is ready for you. Right. And the kids are going to be glued to the screen. Right. Oh, look at the villagers they have. Do you think that they waited to get blue villagers? I'd like to know how this all came about. <gasps> They've got a blue ice cream cone and a blue mat. Oh, it's so well done. It's just so well, well done. Everything is colored a certain way. Wow, and they've got signs everywhere. We need to pick up that twig immediately. Oh, what's happening up here now? Oh, oh, hello. Welcome, Chip. Hi. This is a, is this a real, a real person? This is the real Chip, isn't it? I exchanged with Chip before, um, with uh, Chip's, Chip's, can I go in your house, Chip? Do you mind? I'm going in chip chip was uh, who let me exchange my rusted part, but they were working. Yeah. This would be amazing at school, right? This would have been completely, I'm at, yeah. Designing an animal crossing Island for project would be awesome. Right? So last time I was here, I explored a couple of these rooms, but not all of them. And I'm really curious about what's inside the basements. Kinsey Sakura says, hi, Martina, how are you? I'm doing okay. I am waking, waking up slowly. Um, I am also uh, old and not understanding all the things about E-Cycle Island, not E-Cycle Land, about Animal Crossing. I'm like, why can't I use my bunny wand? I'd like to use my magical bunny wand. And everyone's like, you can't use it if you're on a dream address. I'm like, I want to use my bunny wand. So I've been, uh, I've been learning new things. <laughs> The important thing is you don't have to be perfect. You can learn things along the way. But this place, 
for those of you that haven't seen it, the upstairs is really cool. I didn't take any photos last time I was here. So I think today is just gonna be like a Canadian photo shoot. Look at this. It's an entire, like, how did you even, how do you even build this? That's the thing that I don't understand. I didn't know you could get servers. These are servers, right? This is definitely servers. Oh, it's the same avatar for Chip, but not the human behind it because it's a dream island. I see. I see. Man, they built entire servers. <laughs> it really is an amazingly detailed island, right? Yeah, exactly. Someone's like, someone spent hundreds of hours to get all the color coordinated things in the villagers just to get it perfect. Exactly. Yeah. I wonder if I can take a, a casual. Good job, little buddy. Good job, little hardworking buddy. <laughs> He's like, oh, it was the perfect pose. Ah, the Twitter server room. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, upstairs is, um, someone told me there was a room. Wait, did I not go in here? Okay, I've missed out on two rooms, it seems. Seems like I've missed out on two rooms. Oh, is this like a Zen room? Where it's like, you are one, you are one with the world. This is my stretch space. <laughs> yes, and one, and two. I think um, I should do that in my real life as well. And I think I forgot to put on pants for my Animal Crossing character. Not in real life, I'm wearing pants. I meant in my Animal Crossing character land. I might've forgot to put pants. No, it's a shirt dress, right? It's fine, it's a shirt dress. Ohio gozaimasu from Kya Kya. Hello, welcome, good morning. Wait till you guys see this upstairs area. It doesn't even make sense to me um, how they've done this because I'm pretty sure Intel was in the Mars Land Rover chip that was like running it. How, how did they make this room with a satellite and everything? Isn't this completely insane? Good morning, Kenna. If you're joining in now, we are currently on E-Cycle Land Island. This is our last time to visit. You can also visit on the dream address, which is what we're doing right now. Yeah. I'm on space. I'm in space, Mom. I'm in space. Just going to casually look like a space alien. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. I'm in space, everyone. How did I get in space? Yeah, uh-huh. Just a little zooming in because I've just discovered an alien. Oh, no, no! <laughs> I set it all up and I was like, that's good. And then I just, um, just deleted it all. Let's try this again. There we go, there we go. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm, that seems about right. In space, no one can hear you recycle e-waste. No! Oh my gosh, there's another alien. But look at this, look at this wall. How, how is this floating, is what I'd like to know. How is this floating here? And, and was there, uh, in Animal Crossing, the ability to make a satellite of some kind? I don't recall this in uh, Nook's little shop, like, it's really amazing. And how do they make a, a, a Mars land? Like, how did this happen? I have so many questions here. Mimp J says, first time catching King Kogi on a live stream. So exciting. And hello to Rai or Ray, depending. Also first time catching a live stream. Hello, hello. We are currently on E-Cycle Land uh, Island, which is my last time to visit and take a million photos with all these aliens and creatures. And uh, we're talking about e-waste and why we need to 
learn how to recycle it. And all the Infobox has links so that you can get rid of all those old laptops and phones and uh, other things like TVs and monitors that are in your house or in your garage and uh, just sitting around or going to landfills causing you know heavy metal leaching. So this game is supposed to be, this is an island within an island, it's within a game talking to us about the importance of e-cycling. So even on Animal Crossing, I have extra waste. I have these like little rusted parts. So that's the point of this. Uh, and it is a sponsored stream, but I'm very happy to get behind this message because it's an important one. We are now about to enter the basement, which I have never been before. So here we go. We're going down to the basement. Oh no, Neko Tigers, you're gonna miss the basement. Satan Pixie says you've got a wish on a shooting star to get them. Oh my gosh. How cute is this? This must be like chips. Oh, it's like his it's like his room. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. Is this the chair that I'm in right now? It lights up when you sit in it. This is amazing. The arcade cab, I know I saw a claw machine and everything. What? How did they get that star banner? It's so pretty. See, if they hadn't made such a cool space or a cool island and all these details, like let's dig and rusted parts, like people wouldn't be excited and not talking about it and sharing it. But like you get really excited at the amount of effort and detail that's gone into something. Wow. It's so cute, right? The keyboard is cycling RGB lights. It is, yes, you're right. You can see it in the background. Oh my gosh. I had no idea. My chair doesn't light up. Okay, let's go into handheld mode um, and, and really, oh my gosh. Wow, they've got fluorescent tube lighting on the wall. Yeah, Charlie's. hi. Yeah, someone's job was to build this island and to think about, look at this, rusted parts as a, as a little calendar or poster on the wall. Wow. This is so cute. Do you think I can play this game? Please tell me this works. Da, 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 da. I mean, I know you can't. Oh, it turns on and off though. <laughs> Gumball machines. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <gasps> and look at the bed, it's a sports car. And the lights come on. Wow. If the chair was real, I'd want it in real life. That's what I'm saying, Space Junk. It's ridiculous. This is a cozy, amazing room. Oh, they do have a pink frog chair. You're right. What, what, live? Hi, Kogi-chan, hi, Aqua. Look at their pink froggy chair. I am in it. I am in the pink froggy chair. It's so, I haven't even seen froggy chairs. I've heard all about them. I read all about the magic of these froggy chairs. So cute. I'm glad they eventually brought them back because everybody was like, we want them, they're adorable. <gasps> it's so cozy. Well, I'm glad I came back here because it would have been really sad if I had missed out on this. This place is... Do you think the claw machine actually works? No, it doesn't work, does it? That'd be cool if it did. Chip would be like, um, you came to my room and stole my teddy bears. <gasps> This is that um, bird that, yep. This was in The Simpsons when Mr. S when Homer was like, he's going back for another drink again. Wow. Okay, so somebody told me that there's another room. So I thought there was just the downstairs, but apparently there's another space. How do you send people stuff? See, so I've learned about Nookazon through working with Intel and eCycleLand because there is a um, Nookazon link in my info box so that you can take your rusted parts and on Nookazon they'll trade it for 
other items. So you can get like a laptop or you can get like, uh, I got a gaming station. So if you have any rusted parts on Animal Crossing, you can actually go to Nookazon, the links in the info, to their page and you can exchange it in for real as well. Um, yeah. Julio says, I know it wasn't intentional, but I'm glad the basement was the last room to check out. It was so well done. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, right? So I didn't know that people can exchange things with each other. So then when I went to Nukazon for the first time and checked it out, I was like, oh, you can even exchange things with people through Nukazon. And I'm like, Nukazon, I guess it's like the Nook, Nook, Nook land, like Nook, the stores. Just want to say I did it all for the Nookie, but I don't know if I'm dating myself by saying that. I'll say it. Someone said they sold all their froggy chairs. Yeah, so I guess that's like Nookazon, right? Wow. It's crazy. Now, have I visited? No, wait. There's another one here. In the mail, Martina, in your town. What, you can mail it to somebody? That's amazing. Oh, thank you for the compliment on the pretty hair. This was me going to sleep with totally soaking wet hair. So I decided to um, put it into tiny braids and wake up in the morning as if I had effort into it, but I, I just took the braids out. It's that easy. I think everything about this is clearly really well thought out and detailed. It's just, it's just so well done. <laughs> Let's get ourselves a good old fashioned Canadian selfie, huh? That's what I'm saying. Cause this will be my last time visiting. I'm going to sit on the floor. That's right. Closer, enhance, enhance. Maybe I'll move over slightly. No, no, I like the e-cycle in the background. I think it looks really cute. Yeah. Back to the camera mode. There we go. Yeah. I also didn't know that you could um, share all these photos through social media. They're like, do you want to send them through social media? I was like, what? Thank you, Lily, for the Limp Bizkit reference. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Larnell Cross also. Oh, Larnell. Also got the Limp Bizkit um, reference. Um, yeah, I'm really appreciating that, uh, that I'm not the only person who did it all for the Nookie. Come on, the Nookie, come on. So I could get that frog chair. I'll give you all my bells, I'll give you all my bells, I'll give you all my bells. I did it all for the Nookie. Not the real song, but I'm um, pretty close to it. All right, last photo, last photos. And then this is, I'm gonna finally finally do something on my island um, that involves getting it ready for the winter but last time it was very complicated okay one of my villagers got a cold I had to get medicine there was dirt and dust everywhere it created a lot of complications um, and then I didn't end up doing really anything whatsoever but today I'm determined to lay down some paths and create a cafe for my villagers hmm so now when you guys see these pictures uh, posted up online eventually, um, because I'm going to put up a post talking about the last thing, which is bringing this into real life, right? Because if you're visiting the stream now, this is a sponsored stream from Intel and Dell, and we are visiting the eCycle land, and it's all about taking your actual stuff in real life and eCycling it. It's not just about the video game, right? So this eventually I'll put up a post online that will help you guys to kind of have that final push to be like, Get that stuff out of your house, bring it in to a place. You can either bring it into a Goodwill to change it in. Um, you can send it in to, to, uh, to Dell as well, and you can get credit. Uh, some of them, if it's like a million years old and you can't get anything for it, they'll just take it for, for free. So, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like, there's no, there's no excuse. Uh, well, thanks for all your hard work on making this. This was really well done. I'm going to give them a little clap, I think. Yes, indeed. Thank you for the bangs. Do you like my version there of doing it all for the for the nookie? If you don't know what nook is, um, it's the um, name of the shop where you can exchange things in Animal Crossing. <laughs> okay, so what else can I do hanging around here? Oh, look, they've got a cute little elephant person. I can visit the um, the store and stuff, right? I should be able to visit their store, and that's where I got the patterns last time. Right, Able Sisters and stuff like that. So if I visit the Able Sisters, am I able to try? Oh, okay. I guess not with the dream address. Excellent timing for a delivery to come in. <laughs> that doorbell is the doorbell in my house. I can't, I cannot help you. 
Okay, so you, you cannot. Kath Kathleen says, you can go to a friend's island and pick up items that they've dropped. You can go back home and order them from your own catalog. Oh, I didn't know that. I see that. I wanna show you guys the, um, the actual e-cycle. So here, this is where I originally landed on the island and they have an entire trade thing. So you come up here and they've created this entire like conveyor belt, which is amazing. And then over here, chip, which we saw before, I was able to put my, my old rusted computer chip that I had, I dropped it here. And then I went over here and then they exchanged it for me for something new. So it was really nice to, to actually see, you know, it translating from Animal Crossing to a part and then going back to real life as well. Oh, oh, oh yeah, and that's where we started out. Well, I think I'm gonna say um, goodbye to eCycle Land. I really, really appreciate Intel and Dell for letting me be a part of this. This was a message that I was very happy to be a part of. Um, we're gonna say goodbye, and we're gonna head back, uh, back to my island, which is not a gorgeous five-star island like this one is. I do hope that everybody learned something actually valuable from this because I, I mean, I personally did. I did a lot of research when I found out that I'd be doing this. I was doing a lot of research and um, looking into it and understanding e-cycling and all the stuff they were doing. So I felt like uh, I was kind of in school and, and learning something new. So what about this here? Isn't this something that... Oh, take home a custom design. Yeah, let's check this out. I'm pretty sure I already have the same patterns unless they've got new ones, but you guys can also visit this and get the custom design. Someone was talking about having the Intel mat, right? Hi, Scorpio Falls, first time seeing me on the stream. Yes, so I have, um, I'm, gonna t I'm gonna go ahead and take Chip. <laughs> I, can, I can put him on, <laughs> I'm gonna put him on the wall because I have other portraits of my, um, of other people. And I already have uh, this design. It's really cute. It's like a little rain jacket. And um, what is it? That's how they got the cubes done, right? And I have a couple of the other ones as well. I have um, Chippy and then I have the recycling one. But so you guys can come here. You can see the bottom right below me here. There is the, uh, oh no, Kogi's covering it a bit. It's okay. I'll put it, I'll put it in the info box and stuff. It's currently 9.53 a.m., uh, asks the D. It's uh, 9.53 a.m. in Japan. Tokyo, it's the morning. We're gonna head on, we're gonna head on home, y'all. Thank you very much for letting me be part of this, everybody. We're gonna continue our, our live stream. See you later, you cycle land. All right, let's get back into our futon, shall we? That's a very confusing way to say it, Luna. I'd like to wake up. Now imagine the shrill tones of an alarm clock. Um, funny, I don't ever wake up to an alarm clock. I wake up to a favorite song of choice because an alarm clock, I know everybody will say the same things that alarm clocks make you feel very jittery and like stressed out. But for me, it is very, anyone who I think has sensitivity to sounds, it's like more than unnerving, it's very upsetting. So I always wake up to like a favorite song instead. I've like bought one online. Oh my God, look, I woke up. <laughs> This is how I normally wake up. I just can't wake up to an alarm clock sound. You all right there, buddy? You look a little exhausted. There you go. She's up. She's up. Dun, 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 dun. Now. No! I can't use my wand in my own house, can I? No, I can't. So my bunny day wand is equipped with a really cool little um, outfit that I'll show you when we go outside. <laughs> Obsidian Moon says, if I listen to music or have a music song alarm, it goes into my dream. And when an alarm is jar, while an alarm is jarring, it's the only thing that works for me. I totally get that. Um, I absolutely understand that some people like have a really hard time waking up, but for me, I do not. I wake up to lights, sounds, things in hallways and because of my right ear is um, my left ear is the only ear that I can hear out properly from and my right ear is uh, deaf so my a little bone inside dislocated ah uh, EDS so when I sleep on my left side it's totally silent and then when I roll over it's like suddenly 
the volume in the world is turned up. So even somebody in the hallway, I like hear very clearly. So I find it very abrupt. It's very, uh, it's very scary to like roll over back and forth. Harley said, what song? It is a song by Bop, B-O-P. Um, and it is called, <gasps> what's the name of it? I've been listening to it for so long, I can't remember the name of it. It's like, it has this really, I'll look up the name of it, but it's uh, it's one of my favorite um, artists. He's a, yeah, he's like an electronic kind of artist and, and um, it's very soft and lovely. I really enjoy it. Emzel says, finally catching a stream. Thanks to my hungry baby. Good job, hungry baby. Um, have myself a little bit of breakfast. Get myself a little bit of uh, Gohan in. Yum. Uh-huh. And, uh, and we're ready to go. Can't believe I'm walking around in my house with shoes on. Liza, half deaf people unite. I'm like, what? Oh my gosh, having to wear a mask um, and having to not be able to rip, like, rip read. Not rip read, not being able to lip read was quite a struggle. Mm. I rely on a lot of lip reading or if I'm in like a busy izakaya or a busy place, it's like I can barely hear what people are saying. Mm. And the funny part is, is that I actually can hear out of it. It's just very distorted and weird. And so two sounds happening at once going through each ear creates like this bizarre sound in my head. Oh, Dish, thank you for joining as a passenger. Your ticket to the airship. There you go. Make sure you check out um, King Kogi Radio. It's a playlist for YouTube and um, Patreon uh, members only. And it, I put together tons of different music that I love. So definitely check that out. Your favorite Animal Crossing home song. Yes, it's an amazing song, right? Na, 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 na. All right. Oh, I should have done this first. I'm so sad. Uh, look, look how cute this outfit is. Look how cute this is. Isn't it cute? Isn't it so cute? It's really cute, right? With microchip. I got a little pink boots, a little polka dot socks, and a little microchip jacket, a little Canadian toucan, and little blue glasses. It's really adorable, I know. And, bunny day wand. I have a couple of outfits here that you guys might like. This is Captain Martina. Yes, I have a tiny little, I have a tiny little pig nose, Kogi. Wee wee? Yep. Wee 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 wee. I'm cosplaying as, um, as you. It's a, it's a King Kogi cosplay right there. <laughs> and, uh, this shirt I made, this is in my shop. Because it's got, um, Onigiri on the back. As you guys know, I love, uh, I love Onigiri. So I made a little <laughs> onigiri on the back. It's my first design I ever tried. I also didn't know that you can use like computers and stuff. So I, I designed the whole thing using my like little thumb pad and it was very, uh, very, very stressful to do. Mo, oh my God, worlds collide. Never thought I'd see one of my fave YouTubers and one of my fave Genshin streamers in the same place. What's going on? Is there another streamer here together in the, in the comment section? Hello, hello other streamer. We are all here together in, in, uh, Someone who is not a professional streamer attempting to be an, a normal streamer and being like, I swear I, I know how to do things. That's what's happening here. I just don't, I don't think I ever played, no, I never played a video game uh, outside of, this was my very first video game that like I played, like on my own. And so getting to know the controls, I realize it's kind of like a, it's like a zoning out and just accepting that you know where everything is. But for the first time to play, like as myself, I kept being like, how do I get my, how do I get my shovel? How do, how do I get my this? Like, it was so confusing. And, and I know it sounds silly because people are probably like, you know, oh, video games, oh, anyone can play it. No, being able to like chat with people and then also, you know, move along as well with your thumbs and do things naturally, it's actually really tough. So if you're a pro streamer, it's a lot tougher than uh, people understand. And I'm playing Animal Crossing where there's nothing coming at me. Like there's nothing coming at me. <laughs> I'll see a balloon go by and I'm like, ah, how do I shoot it down? I like panic and like pull out a shovel and like hit my local villager. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's Dish. Hi Dish, sorry I didn't know. 
I didn't know. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it, I guess uh, Mzel said Animal Crossing is a good game to learn because it's chill. Uh, Angela, yes, I actually, I play Stardew Valley, so I have an entire farm and I am finally have gotten like the, um, what are they called? Not the platinum, but the sprinkler systems and stuff. So I play Stardew Valley, but that was like after I played um, Animal Crossing and, and stuff like that. It does take long to build up muscle memory. Yeah, that's the word, Mo, exactly, you know? Dish, you should use this excuse next time in a video game. You, you are not, you're about to witness what it's like to watch someone who's been playing this game for like two years now and I still take out a shovel and like hit my villagers on the head when I'm trying to use a net or something. It's very, it's very challenging for me. <laughs> okay, so step one here. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I have in here a collection of uh, clothing and stuff that I'm giving away. Oh, someone just gave me this though, one of my villagers. Uh, I'm gonna give these away to some of my villagers. I am also going to try to pick up a whole bunch of stuff and trade them in for bells. I haven't checked out my store or my shop. So I think we should do a little bit of, um, ah, that's exactly what I'm about to talk about. Okay, I have to shoot this down before it hits the flower patch. Look at that, nailed it. Pro game ski right there, everyone. And then I don't remember which button to pick up. Got it. First try. What have I gotten? Ooh, a career skirt. If there's one thing I was looking for in my life, it was a career skirt. Chimboa1139, welcome as a new passenger to the King Kogi airship. Thank you for joining as a YouTube member. Thank you very much. Um, do you pull it so Good, okay, it's not just me then. Anastasia says, needing to pull out a net quickly gives you anxiety. Me as well. I always, I hit people on the head. I, yeah, all that kind of stuff. No, I didn't feed my um, flowers today, nothing. I literally just woke up and, um, and got a little bit of my island ready to make sure my villagers didn't bust on in while I was talking to you guys. Uh, Cause you know, now they, ha now they come into your house. And so I'll be like trying to get ready and they're like, knock, knock, I'm coming in. And I'm like, I'm not ready. I'm like in pajamas and underwear and they just come in. I'm like, we have to talk about boundaries, boundaries. Yesterday, one of my villagers, Alfonso came into my house and I sat in a chair while he walked around and he walked, I'm not kidding you. This is me, this is Alfonso. He walked right up to my nose like this as a, and I was like, hey, hey, Alfonso, you're pretty close to me. And he just stared at me like this. I'm like, I couldn't get out of the chair. He, he just stood in front of me the whole time. That's never happened to me before. It's never happened to me before. So I was very uh, confused as to what was going on there. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> Walks in without knocking, sounds like my mother-in-law. Oh my gosh, Kate, Kathleen says, I'm always kicking dirt over my ground covered patterns by accident. All the time. I am constantly, you'll, you'll see some of my shame spots where I've accidentally kicked a square um, out of a design that I made. And then because I did that, I'm too lazy to lay down the pattern again. And so I just put a table over it. That's right, an entire table. So um, I'm with you on that. So for those of you who've never played before, the reason I'm watering is because I will be exchanging these for bells at the Nookie store, right? And um, they will grow like double fold. I personally find planting plants the best way to make bells. I used to go around like shaking my trees and it took forever. Although when I shook things, I did go into Sean Paul mode. I'd be like, shake that tree, miss. Anabala, shake that tree, miss. Kana, kana. So I used to do that all the time. Uh, and then I decided maybe I could just plant fruits instead and that's what I did <laughs> I have many 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 patches of fruits and vegetables uh, or vegetables all over the island to pick up if you're open items or storage when villagers are visiting they and then close it they'll say they're gonna head out now oh I did not know that I thought I tried that before and they said it's rude to like redecorate when companies here and they wouldn't allow me to do it I thought that was very um, very strange Anastasia Stowers, I've learned so much in the last few minutes of Animal Crossing. I mean, I'm not really the person to learn from because I had never played Animal Crossing before in my entire life. And so I have learned everything the, um, from everybody else. It kind of reminds me of old school video game time period. So let me do an old person thing. Ready? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have a seat here. I'm gonna have a seat on the ground and I'm gonna go back in my day. If, if I ever can recall how to do anything. There we go. 
Well, you see, back in my day, we didn't have this thing called the internet. So when you were playing a video game and you needed to figure out what you could do with it, you had to like either just figure it out or you'd go to someone else's house and they'd have like a magazine with cheat codes. And I remember getting on a bicycle with my friend David across the street and we biked over to his friend's house because we were playing Zelda at the time and we couldn't figure out how to get the past this. And he had this game magazine. And then we got there and we took out a pencil and paper because smartphones didn't exist yet. And we had to write down the game code. And we got back on our bikes. And we biked back to his house. And then we put in the code. And it was like, doo 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 or whatever happens. And it was amazing. So it felt very, um, very manual and difficult to do. And that's how I feel I play Animal Crossing. I, I just struggle my way through it. And then people give me explanations of things that I should do. And I go, oh, that's a great idea. And then um, I learn something new. So I feel like it's a very old school way of learning. And I don't mind it. I don't want to know everything instantly. I've been finding out things from you guys in very slow trickles and it's been lovely. Oh, gaming guide magazines, yes. Zombie Liana, Leon, Zombie Leone says you can have pumpkins grow three at a time. That's from the watering, right? I think. So if you water, you can get the three pumpkins. No, besmirch my island. This is my BFF's house, Tangy. It's very cute and purple, because she loves purple stuff. She's not home right now, but um, I have a purple shirt to give her. Okay, we'll find her. We'll find her. I'm doing the seashell route to pick up all the seashells along the way, basically. Cartridges, when you blow on it, uh, Larnell, I still, when no one's looking, when something's not working, I somehow resort to feeling like I need to blow on something. Like if my headphones, I plug them in and your headphone jack isn't working, I'll like take out my phone and go like in the bottom and be like, I should do it. Or like you smack something if it's not working, you just give it a, give it a couple gentle schmacks. Just a few gentle schmacks. No, see? See, I didn't want to do that. Or did I? Maybe it's been part of my sinister plan all along. This is my outdoor onsen, for those of you that haven't seen my island yet. Uh, it's got uses in the bathtub. Love it. Uh, and it's got this little cute area so you can just like chill. Uh, and it gives you privacy so no one can see you naked while you walk around, right? Oh, fellow old person here. I used to ask my brother to help me and half the time he said no. Well, the funny part is because I was like the youngest in my, my family as well as um, like friend circle families. I'm just gonna sit up here for a bit and enjoy the view. Um, because I was the youngest, I was never really the person to play the game because everybody above me was older, so everybody else would play. And if I tried to play, I would like screw up and not be very good at it. So I really got comfortable with enjoying observing people play games. That was my favorite thing to do, to like watch somebody play a game, right? And so even nowadays, like my friends who play games will be like, can I just watch? And I just get popcorn. And I love being the person to help out with what's happening. So if they don't know like, how do I do this or how do I do that? I'll be like, hang on. And I have this visual of having Spudgy as a donkey. I call it a spadonkey. I've done a drawing of it as well. So I can show you the spadonkey. And I get on the spadonkey and I'm like, ah, brr -dum, brr -dum, brr -dum, and I pull up my scroll and I'll be like, according to the internet, you know, this is the correct answer. Or you need to use the code. So I really enjoy um, helping other people game. And so this is my like first time to have my own game that I'm playing, like that I'm manually playing. So it's been, you know, it's been interesting. Streaming before streaming was a thing. Oh, the same as the youngest, right? Yeah, nice, uh, nice Suki says the same thing. You, you could kind of watch, but they didn't really want you to play. Not because they're being mean, but because we just didn't have the dexterity for it. There's Tangy. Oh my God, she's wearing the hat I got her. We have the same outfit. I have an outfit that we can twin. <laughs> this is Tangy. Kawaii desu Thanks for chatting with me. This is for you. You're giving me a thing? That's right, Tanksky. That's right, BFFs. I've got, oh, I was gonna give her this, the plaid, the plaid puff shirt sleeve thing, but I just got this school jacket from a random villager. And I'm wondering if she would look adorable as one. Should I do the school jacket or should I do the plaid puff sleeve? Okay, so plaid or school jacket. Plaid or school jacket. This is what I, this is what I need to know. Flag or skill jacket. Raincoast Blues, the bathtub is a yuzu bathtub. And so I got it like, I think last winter time. It's amazing. Mm. It's 
Spooky Skeleton said, I've just started watching again after a few years and it makes me happy to see you doing well and being happy. Plus, I love Animal Crossing, so it's a 10 out of 10 screen. Stream. Scream. Ah! Thanks, Spooky. <laughs> Okay, we got plaid, plaid, school, plaid, school, school, plaid, plaid. Make a pole? I can make a pole? How can I make a pole? Again, of the older here. This is not plaid, plaid, school, plaid, school, school, plaid, plaid, school. It's not, it's, it's almost completely even here. School. Becca Sun says school, school. Okay, we're gonna go for school. We're doing school. Here, girl, it's a school jacket. I hope it's a really cute one. I haven't looked at it yet, but usually in a Japanese game. <laughs> hey, I wanted to say thanks, but with like an object, it's a bathroom, bathrobe, enjoy. Thanks, Tangy. You do look very cute. Oh, and there is, oh, she's singing, I'll let her be. There's Sherb, my other favorite villager. Ahoy, King Kogi, I like running into you. I've got a gift for you too, Sherbski. Here's a bathrobe and he's like, wait a second. <laughs> um, I wonder if he'd like a skirt. Maybe. Let's give it a go. Anyone can wear a skirt. It's a career skirt. I'm gonna try it on later with a mirror and everything. Oh, okay. I'm gonna put on a fashion show for my bugs in the floor, bum punch. Here's an after school jacket. All I get is school jackets from people. Thanks. Thanks, Sherb. I love when they sing. It's so cute. Hi, Sherbear 890. You came at the exact same time. Good night, Anastasia. Enjoy your food. This is gonna be, we're gonna do this in a second because I'm gonna get distracted completely. Um, here's my little shameful square that I kicked uh, right here. I kicked the square with my foot and was too upset to redo it again. So I just put down a table and a basket of bread. I felt like it worked out very well personally. Nobody could tell, right? Nobody, nobody could tell. <laughs> the villagers that don't wear bottoms but they will display it in their houses. Oh, they don't wear bottoms because I've given a couple of them dresses and they come out wearing the dress, but I guess the bottoms are different. They're, um, they're complex. Okay, so this is the way that Martina does it. Everyone's different, but I go through my beach at the beginning of the day, my little kotatsu. And uh, when I go through my beach, I just pick up all the stuff and I pick up, oh, Kyle. What up, Kyle Ski? Gah, what? I wasn't sleeping. I was just visualizing a monster catch, yo mama. All right, I'll be back with something for you later. Uh, then after I pick all this stuff up, I drop it all off at the Nookski shop. Uh, and then, uh, oh, it's my Lagothi picnic area. And then we can go around and actually start like fixing, uh, fixing stuff up. This is a new area I just made. A besmirch on my islands! Oh my gosh, mushrooms everywhere. So I made this little um, fountainy area. I'm trying to add more height to my island. I didn't realize it was incredibly flat and I had no idea. Kyle's your BFF. Kyle is so funny. Um, he's, for those of you that don't know, he's like an attempting to be a YouTuber. Of course, I don't say the word YouTuber in it. Uh, this is his house. It is a shack um, and <laughs> it's a shack and he has lighting and this little electronic thing that I put out. This shines on his house at nighttime. And inside it's just like, it's terrible. He sleeps on a cardboard box and he has like streaming stuff set up and he like pretends to do music. And when I ask him to play, he's like, I, I can't play right now because I've already played today. And I'm like, uh-huh. He loves high-end stuff, even though he's broke. And so I was just like, uh-oh, it's just full. Like, what are you trying to say here, you guys? About YouTubers living in little shacks, sleeping on cardboard boxes. Okay, uh, I got lots of stuff here. We can head on back and um, drop this off to make money at the nooks. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kathleen, I love picking up stars too. Um, I was lucky the first time I streamed to have uh, a star, like a shower, the day before. Is he home? Oh, he is home. Let's check out. Let's see what's happening here. Rivermouth fish says uh, Black High at the third. What's the difference between a rivermouth fish? Are they special? Wow, all my friends are hanging out here. What are you doing in here, Klaus? 
Oh, I didn't know you were friends with Rooney, too. Well, make yourself at home. <laughs> Check your butt. What's the latest? Whoa, fancy meeting here at Rooney's place. Glad to see we're both on the VIP list, Sailor Moon. What up, Runeski? How you feeling better? He's, um, he is very, like, jock-oriented, and last time he was sick and I got him medicine, so, um, I'm not really sure what he sounds like yet. It's kind of like, good to see ya! Turns out Carl's just, just stopped by too. Like, let's chat, and he's like, my own work table may not look much, but it's really comfy. Shouldn't judge by looks alone. It's true. Klaus, do I have anything to give you that you're gonna like? He might like, oh, I've already given him a bathrobe. Maybe I'll give him another bathrobe. Yo, what's up, dude? Check your butt. This is for you. Seriously, for me? He lives in a bathhouse. So I feel like he would like a bathrobe, but he also might be offended by it because he's very much like, you know, into being posh. Let's check it. I really like it. Do my eyes deceive me or is this a bathrobe? Whoa. This is different from my usual style, but I'll try it on anything that looks cute. Here we go. Hey, not bad. Really not bad at all. Dare I say good. I think it's good. All right, y'all. See you later. Enjoy your time together in your bathrobe. <laughs> Larnell, have you ever had pumpkin pie, Martina? I have. I adore pumpkin pie. I absolutely love pumpkin pie. It's one of the things that I really miss getting during autumn and, um, uh, you know, Christmas time. They don't have pumpkin pie in Asia. They have versions of pumpkin pie. Secret ladder. They have versions of pumpkin pie, but it's not really the same as the pumpkin pie you have uh, back home, at least in North America. What I'm curious about is if anybody has pumpkin pie outside of North America, if it's a normal thing. So that's what I'm curious about, right? This is my new goth friend. You guys ready to meet him? I planted those gothy flowers outside his house for him because I thought he'd like it. Look at him. Look at his house. I need to figure out how to speak for him though because it's my first time. Maybe he can be country like, well, well, if it isn't Starberry, be eating a half my door first thing in the morning. I think he's kind of a rocker though. Know what, kiddo? Turkey day's almost here, a whole day to make and eat and grub. What kind of vittles they'll be serving in the plaza? Best not dwell over it, I'll just drool all over it. Look at how amazing this guy's house is. He's got a skull, um, throwback skull radio, it's a radio. Isn't this totally amazing? He's got skulls on the wall. He has a completely black room with a guitar. He's wearing a leather jacket. He's got purple hair. This to me is absolutely amazing. I just totally love that this guy's on my island now. Yeah! And here I am being like, I'm wearing this cute little yellow thing with a blue tack on it. Costco Korea has pumpkin pie in the fall and it fills the void with the tear face thing. Yes, exactly. Roscoe reminds me of Monochrome Unicorn from Adventure Time. Roscoe's been a character since the original Animal Crossing. He was way meaner. Oh, really? Elder Goth vibes. Yeah, I really like him. I only just met him literally last night when I was just, uh, I actually don't know how to play my electric guitar. Makes for cool furniture though. <laughs> well, see you later. I'm, I'm happy to meet you. you. You're, you might be the coolest character on my Animal Crossing Island. Oh, you recognize it instantly. I only build with the color black and sometimes very dark gray. So yeah, I gave him all these little, um, I put these down, these little like black flowers, and then I made a little paving area here, and I put a little flower for him there, and um, what's hilarious is that this used to be covered in like rainbow flowers. I had made this like little rainbow path, and it was very bright and colorful with this little like fairy garden up top here, and then this new guy moves in and he's like black like my heart, and I'm like, he's gothy, and I had all this rainbow stuff laid down. <laughs> Maggie Delight, don't say elder goth, just say regular goth. Yeah, Mo M, I heard that the villagers were meaner in the original one, that they had a lot of attitude and stuff. Uh, Ancient Flounder, you say old school train station chairs, but very uh, legitimately normal in Japan. I see these chairs like everywhere. The funny thing about um, Animal Crossing, I didn't realize how much stuff is Japan. Like obviously it's a game made about people are in Japan, but uh, 
it, it actually, the stuff is almost exactly on the T, especially when you visit Isabel and, um, and um, Mission Nuki himself inside the office. It is like going to an office in Japan. Thanks for coming around. I have a gift for her. I gave her a shirt yesterday that she loved. I'm gonna give her a, I think I already gave her a raincoat. Oh no. She might like this. A plaid puff sleeve shirt. Whoa, cool. I bet this will look great on me. Oh, it sure does. Well, Starberry, how do I look? While we're at it, here's a little something from me to you. It's a tennis sweater. I imagine her to be like a cool mom. That's how she speaks. Thank you very much, Sylvie, for this. Uh, I see that you are smacking your baby on the head. Sylvie's the character that I, I have already um, told you guys, deep, dark uh, confession before. I didn't talk to her for a long time because the first time I saw her, she was in the bushes and I couldn't see her whole body. And so I just saw her head and I saw this purple, what I thought was like a purple peen. Like she was some kind of pervert on my island with this like purple peen sticking out. And I was like, Ugh! so I didn't want to talk to her at all. And then eventually I realized that she was a kangaroo and had a baby in her pouch and I felt very bad. Then I started talking to her and turns out she's just like one of the sweetest characters on the island. And I felt really guilty for being like ignoring her for so long. And that's my story. Um, so I feel sorry that I did that to her. But now we're, we're oh, there goes uh, my sporty, sporty spice. Yeah, so now we're good friends. Okay, to the nookies. Uh, this is my coffee shop area. It's lame, I don't love it. So what I'm gonna do is move everything over to the right and that's what we're gonna do today. I swear I'm gonna do it. I'll stream, I didn't mean to, but it really honestly looked like a weird peen. And like, sometimes you don't know what Animal Crossing is gonna do. Like, I find that bird, uh, Gull, what's his name, Gulliver? Just, I just woke up one day and there's a bird passed out on my beach. And I was like, oh my God, it looks like he's dead. And you poke him with a stick and he's a castaway off of a boat. And you have to like really kick the heck out of him to wake him up. So I was like, who knows what goes in Animal Crossing, you know? Here are the nook skis. Here we walk around. What do you need today? I want to sell, Tommy. I want to sell. I'll tell you what I'm offering, Tommy. Original things. You've never seen these things before in my life. These are completely new things. We're talking pumpkin. I got white pumpkins. I got yellow pumpkins. I got orange pumpkins. We're doing sugar train. I got orange pumpkins. I got wheat. I got green. Have you ever seen this before? It's a cowrie. I bet you never have seen a cowrie before. Or conch shell, Venus comb. We got ourselves coral. This giant clam is special. It's very special. I will request a little bit more bells than usual. 10 sand dollars and some snee sales. What can you do for me, boys? What can you give me? I guess there's no point of uh, no point of bartering. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, some good pricing. Excellent. Let's see what we have in the shop today. Um, what is this? A horizontal split cur <gasps> Oh my gosh. Is this like the thing that hangs in front of your doorway when you go to an izakaya? Is that what this is? It is, isn't it? Give it to me. Amazing. So I could have like a ramen shop entranceway or something, I hope. I am not interested in anything else here. Oh, it's a puzzle. All my puzzle friends would love that. And this is definitely Calpis, isn't it? A bottled beverage. I'm gonna get it because I have a feeling this is an Animal Crossing thing that I learned like a year later. So heads up to anyone who's a elder Animal Crosser like I am. Some things you can customize. So you can buy a bottle and then you can customize it and turn it into like a different pattern and the pattern will turn it into looking like a stack of cookies or something. So really cool Animal Crossing players have all figured out how to take an object and, and create like an optical illusion from the print on it. So I always kind of, um, you know, figure out now like, oh, I wonder if I can push my that. So that's, that's my whole thing. Curious about what's in the cabinet, here's what we have today. Um, I think I am okay for all of this. I have the frog umbrella. I have the fairy tale umbrella. I purchased every umbrella that came out here. I already have the skull wall. Um, I'm pretty sure I have, I have everything. I don't have everything. There's just certain things I like and don't like. So a white brick. Ah, do I have white brick flooring already? I uh, can't remember. Oh, I must resist. I did change my mind actually. 
Angela says there's one thing that's longer that has a design of a maneko neko and you can hang them near doors. Really? Hmm. Uh, Hannah, I did say kalpis. Um, I definitely said kalpis. It's a kalpis is the pronunciation. It's a Japanese yogurt soda, which is surprisingly uh, delicious. So yeah. See y'all later. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hannah says, Martini, your island's so freaking cute. Do you find the Switch controller okay with your EDS? Any tips for someone who has hurdy hands? Uh, absolutely, I struggled with my controller. So now I have, I bought this controller. It's just like this little tiny little controller. And I'm wearing compression gloves. So these are, these are all tight here. So it kind of keeps my knuckles and joints. Unfortunately, my freaking thumb is not being covered. So I've got the bendy backwards thumbs, which is a big pain in the butt. Um, but if I have the stiff, if I have the finger braces on, some people really like finger splints. For me, I personally find them more painful in the end. Like when I wear them, my skin gets markings in them. So I find the compress, the, comp the compressing gloves. <laughs> the compression gloves, very helpful for gaming. Um, yeah, it keeps it from being less painful. And I finally got a comfy chair. And of course I have a com comfy cokesker, wee wee, in my lap so that my arms are not relying on their own weight the whole time. I kind of keep the controller right on Kogi's butt ski, wee wee wee. And I just very gently um, hold it like this, like just very gently. Uh, miss, Miss Sir, wait, wait. Miss, Miss Asirune? Miss you, Sirune. Pro controller saved my hands. What's the difference between a, a pro controller and between something like this? Oh, we have some new people popping in. Um, oh, oh, hi, Mireya. Hello, friends. Hello. Hi, Ari Chan. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Natural Selection says, I wonder if compression gloves are good for dysgraphia. I don't actually know what dysgraphia is. Uh, I'm not sure. Stormy On says the, the, oh, it just scrolled past. I was right in the middle of reading this. Stormy On says the joy cons hurt my hands and make my pinkies fall asleep. Lol, pro controller is the only way to go. Yeah, I, I didn't, um, I didn't find the, the joy con. My thumb does not do well after all that kind of stuff. The dreamer says, hi everyone. Hope you're having a great time zone. Yes, actually. Oh, it's a pro controller type. Yes. But I knew that Stormy On because I am a pro YouTuber con person here with my pro cat controller. I knew that. Yes. My tongue twister name. Yes, it's very hard. I'm leaning in because I can't read your name. It's Miss Us Rian, maybe? I'm not sure. Oh, a whole bunch of people just came in suddenly. I love a four. Frighten. Claridia. Queen B 101 to 10. Sophie Green and uh, Diva 11. A whole bunch of people just came in at the same time. I can't tell what's happened here. Yes, the dreamer is saying time zone is a lot better because it, it is com complicated to um, figure out where everyone's from. But while we're here, uh, let's do a little bit of an update. Where is everyone tuning in from? Where are we all tuning in from? LaBelle, oh, hello there. I'm on Chome to study some design more. If it's not an imposition, would you mind me doing another style session? Okay, I'd like you to show me an outfit that says, I'm on vacation. Just think about what you'd wear on a leisurely summer trip or to one of those big resorts. Try imagining yourself relaxing on the countryside or soaking up sun on a beach. I'll give you some vacation clothing so you have an idea of what I'm going to look for. I love these little dress up things. You can see it's a, what? Fisher hemmed? Fish, Fisher hemmed? Now, try to put together an entire outfit with vacation written all over it. If that sounds too hard, just wear some nice items that look like they'd go nicely with what I gave you. I'll be waiting right here, okay? All right, LaBelle. LaBelle's a fashion designer and she is the very cool older sister of the other um, hedgehogs on the island. All right, what we got here going on here? We got Poland, we got Brisbane, we got Montreal. We have got um, Soju BC Canada, sweet and do Soju. We have got a very sleepy UK in the house, Calgary, Puerto Rico, Australia, Atlanta, Georgia, New Zealand, Cheesehead, Wisconsin. Great pronunciation, Martina. I can't tell if I'm doing it right or not. Sydney, Australia. We've got Blissworth in the UK. Germany, it's so late, but got to enjoy some Animal Crossing vibes. What time is it? Uh, hola soy, ho, hola? 
Yo, soy milk. What time is it in Germany? <laughs> We've got England as well. We've got Panama, Central America, Mexico, Oklahoma, Chile, another Vancouver. We got Texas in the house. We got Meridian ID. Did I say that right, Godslayer? New Hampshire, Ohio. Oh, it's AM, very morning. Uh, Canberra, 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 Australia. Watching you play made me bring out my Switch and play too. Very nice. Oh, 1.30 AM in the UK. Germany, New Zealand, it's 2.30 PM over there. New York City, we got Greece. Uh, what we're gonna do is make sure that we got on some vacation vibes, y'all. So I think I have to go back to, I have to convert, right? Uh, if you're joining now and you're wondering what this adorable outfit is, this is Microchip. So this stream has been sponsored by Intel and Dell, and I'm very grateful for their sponsorship to talk about uh, e-cycling. So earlier on in the stream, if you're re-watching it uh, and you started from the beginning, we visited e-cycle land island where we learned about e-waste. E-waste is like old laptops, phones, and like monitors and stuff that's in your house. It's just like piling up somewhere and to try to encourage people to e-cycle it. So in the info box, there's a link. And if you're in the States, you can find out an area that's nearby you so that you can send it in, you can get credit, or you can exchange it at Goodwill. And so there's all these different things you can do to, to actually e-cycle instead of tossing it in a landfill. So that was the goal of the beginning of the live stream. This adorable outfit, this was designed by them as Sherb um, looks over my shoulder. Okay, this is my original Canadian outfit that we started out in. True Hope says, hey Martina, long time no see, hope you're doing fine. I'm doing pretty good, doing pretty good. I'm a little bit uh, on the tired side. Um, and that's just because I'm always tired. My back is feeling a little bit better, which is excellent. What did she give me again? A Fisher hemmed? What's a Fisher hemmed? How is this a vacation outfit? Who goes, I'm about to go on vacation, I'm gonna dress up like a chef. That's not a, is this a vacation outfit to somebody? Am I being really, ah, I smacked my mic, I'm sorry. Am I being ignorant to the world? Okay, she said she wants a vacation outfit. Let's go uh, change in the onsen and let's pick out a vacation outfit. She said resort, beaches, all that kind of stuff. Okay, we're gonna change in my locker. Nice to see you streaming. I'm coming down from a week, a, lo a week long charity stream. Oh man, what were you streaming about? What were you streaming for? What charity were you streaming for? Okay. Vacation vibes, everyone. Vacation vibes. Everything here is wintry. Um, a lot of sweaters representing my real life wardrobes, hoodies. Oh, I've got double hoodies. I meant to give that to my um, BFF on the island. That's kind of a little vacation-y. Oh my gosh. Hello, a camera. It's a camera. Um, maybe I need to get like a, a vacation dress and then like a, a hat. But I guess I could do this with like shorts, right? Ah, <laughs> oh, you're coming from a, wait a second. I just saw you answer the question about what you were streaming for, for child's play, okay. Is this a weird, this is a weird vacation outfit, isn't it? Should I put on like, should I put on something? <laughs> this is what I, I frequently vacate in my fashionable royal dress, doesn't everybody? Mm, I thought everybody did. Alexander Bori says, random question. When I play cozy games, I like to light a candle and just vibe. What is your fave candle? So I am not a huge candle person because my mom and dad, if my mom is still streaming, hi mom, were very scared of uh, candles burning in the house and people for getting them and leaving them on, which didn't actually happen. Um, but I guess maybe it happened to my dad before when he was younger or something. So there was a very like no candles being burnt uh, vibe going on in the house. And then once you get a kitty cat, they tend to go over and then Mirrors gets a little burnt whiskers if that happens. But I did have a candle that I really loved before. It was a, um, a, a cinnamon pumpkin Christmassy one. Somebody had sent it in uh, for fan mail a long time ago. And it was like this Christmas smell that I like cinnamony and it was amazing. And I would light it and put it under the stove in Japan and put the fan on. And that way Mimers couldn't get to it and burn his little whiskies. And when I had a Christmas party with friends over, it would like make the whole house smell like cinnamony Christmas magic. It was so nice. 
Oh, Hannah H suggested a yukata. That's true. Sundress and flip flops. Depends on what kind of vacation. Well, she said a resort vacation specifically. So I'm guessing she's saying like, she's thinking like sun, uh, going out in the sun, right? Oh, this is um, what she's already given me. I think she's thinking like a outdoor sunny vacation. I like to wear my pirate hat on vacation. I think, I think I should wear a pirate hat out there. Oh yeah. This is turning into Martina picks out her vacation outfit. Um, based on what she'd really like to wear in real life out <laughs> on vacation. <laughs> candle warmers of the way, no flame in candles and it'll last longer. Oh, I see. Ah, moon candles, what's that? I think that's why I have so many um, electric candles in my house because I, I just turn them on with the button and I feel like I'm not gonna burn the house down and stuff. Cactus Squeeze, have an amazing stream. I'm gonna lurk in the background and snuggle into bed. Take care, everyone. Get all comfy and cozy. Is this screaming vacation to you guys yet? Or is this screaming, what, a very, what about a very small hat? Very small hat. Hawaiian shirt, cargo soaps, and flip flops. This, this, oh, excuse me. I have sun hat. This, this feels vacation-y to me. Doesn't this look like a vacation hat? This looks pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, I think I would wear that to a, to a beach on a vacation. Definitely. Because otherwise I just have hoodies. And um, what about a cute little bag? What about a cute little bag, little backpack? Pink one? Can't really see it. We'll go for this one. Mini pleather bag, yes. I think this is, I think this is looking, I think it's looking pretty good right here. It could be a ski vacation, but I think she specifically said like a resort vacation. And listen to the sandals. Because they're Geta sandals. Ah, oh, it looks like you've changed clothes. Might I see that outfit? Of course, LaBelle. Oh good, let's see it then. Hmm, ha, huh, hmm, I see. Your outfit has a vacation look to it, and it's very unique. I like it. Looking at your creation, I've learned something about coordinating. Yes, thank you for that. I'm going to send a little gift to, you, to your home to show my appreciation. Just don't forget that tailor tickets are supposed to be used at the tailor shop, okay? Well, thank you so much. I hope you'll consider helping me again in the future. No problem, Lebelski. <laughs> you know what I like? Clever, clever little businesswoman here. She gives you tailor tickets, which is for her sister's shop. So she's like, you can spend these in my sister's shop. So she's encouraging you to go to her sister's store because you know that if you've got a bunch of tickets to spend, you're gonna spend more money if you see an outfit that you like. So it's very clever. Well, I feel like this is very inappropriate now um, for the autumn time. So we're gonna have to change again. We're definitely. I just feel like she talks that way, don't you? She's got that very like, yes, right? All right. Now, what to wear for the rest of the day. I'm young. I'm gonna be doing some fixing up around the, fixing up around the, the island. So I think I should probably wear something that's a bit, you know, cash so that I'm not walking around and ruining a perfectly good cleaning outfit. Overalls, feels like it's the right thing to do. Fish waders, maybe the overalls. Overalls and a toque. Oh yeah. Perhaps a cat hat, it protects you. It is a scheming scientist look, isn't it? Nah, 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 nah. That's very, very cute. Get it? I'm a starberry. Yep, I think I'm gonna wear my strawberry hat. And let's put on a pair of cute little ankle socks. And we'll put on some very practical um, sneakers for going out and doing work in the garden. Or maybe we should put on some boots. These are recycled boots, perfect for the stream. I love these samurai, aren't these amazing? Or Blue docks, maybe my pink docks. Oh, these are cute. If 
thought I had pink docks. Pink rain boots. Where are my pink docks at? Where are you pink docks? Maybe I took them off and they're in my, um... okay, I'm gonna do this. And let's change our socks up so we have like a cute little lacy edge or something. Yeah. Cat hat. I know everyone's like, I mean the grape hat. <laughs> okay, we've, we've got the watermelon hat. We've got the strawberry hat. I wear these hoods to bed. Okay. Strawberry hat. Mm, I think the strawberry hat's look, I think it's looking pretty good. I'm not off the top of my head like that. And maybe we can add, um, I do love adding wings, but I don't know if these bat wings are going to work for this. Uh, by the way, there seems to be construction outside right now and I can hear it, but if you guys can hear it, let me know and I will close my window. I can't tell if you guys can hear like the smashing sounds. <laughs> Neo, I need you to make a decision about something, Neo. Mm. I think no sunglasses, but a monocle, no, no, it's too much. It's too much. Just the strawberry. Long and pretty good. Okay. A bus just passed by. I have no buses passing by, so you can't hear it? Okay, that's good. Uh, Hola soy milk. I have a strawberry hat like this. I literally have a strawberry hat like this. It goes on, it has a little green thing from the top. I got it in Amsterdam at this cute little random um, shop hat. It was absolutely on sale because people were like, what am I gonna do with a strawberry hat? And I was like, don't worry. I know what to do with the strawberry hat. I was very, very excited. Um, I love it. I mean, you've, I've definitely, you've seen it probably in photos and stuff or on video before, but it's so cute. I left it in Canada because I had no room in my luggage. I had two pieces of luggage and I had to fit like potentially everything for my life uh, <laughs> in it. So it was a very, very well thought out piece of luggage. Dang it. I don't want any more fossils. Okay, good. Natural selection says you can, can't hear anything but your voice. Uh, Bradley says, great bangs. I don't know if you're talking about my real bangs or my bangs in Animal Crossing, but thank you. I've just cut my own bangs for the first time so that I don't have to keep going to um, the hairdresser to get it done. Uh, I hope I'm doing okay with it all. It's quite stressful to cut bangs, but I think it, I think it turned out okay. They've survived. All right, let's go first say hello and tell everybody they're doing a great job. Ooh, thanks Sable. You're doing so good Sable. Thanks for your hard work Sable. All right, let's see what they have to offer us um, in the store today, shall we? Go right ahead. Oh, so speaking of um, barrettes, I would like to go to, there's an Etsy store online. I don't remember the name of it, but I bookmarked it. They make barrette, barrettes, berets, berets, barrettes or berets. And the center is like a mushroom or it looks like a peach or it has bees on it. And I've been eyeballing it forever. Um, but uh, th the bangs can now kind of stick out. So that's the reason why I think I can, I can go for one of these. I should correct natural selection. I didn't cut the bangs myself originally. I went to a hair salon for that. And then, since then, they've grown down. And so I've been cutting them back to keep them at the normal state that I'd like them to be. So that's what I should say. A Chimeo vest, very cool. We have a cowboy shirt. We have Martina's favorite thing ever, plaid. A tee with a silicone bib, not my style, I'll be honest with you. Cargo pants, way too real life happening here. Oh, a fringe skirt. Oh, I already have this green kimono. Very Halloween-y. I have this uh, old Calmers, the green one, I already have. I really like these kimonos though. I think they're quite, they call them a kimono, but I think you can get away with this as a yukata as well because it's plaid, but they don't usually have a lot of plaid kimonos anymore, which is why they call it an old commoner kimono. Um, but I actually already have this. So combat helmet, cowboy hat, pink cowboy hat, paper boy cap. Mm, I'm not sure. I think I, oh, these are really scary. Very uncomfortable, extremely unnerving. Don't like any of this. Oh my gosh, you guys. These are like the Family Mart socks that they're selling in, in Japan right now. 
absolutely hilarious. I wonder if these are new additions to the game. But I think I, I think I have some of these. Got ourselves some cowboy boots. My sister had cowboy boots that she got from Texas when she was visiting a friend and it took a while to break in. They're kind of like docks. You know, I'm just not feeling anything today. I have a lot of this stuff already and I don't know if there's anything specific that my, um, that anyone in my Animal Crossing world would like. I try to think about what I can buy for them, so then I buy it and then I forget about it and then my entire thing uh, fills up. Yeah, Maggie's Delight, those eyeglasses were scary. Very scary. Nightmare fuel, that's what I thought too. Um, Jack9579, uh, oh, you like the watermelon hat in the wall? That is an original Martina design. <laughs> I haven't played since Rotillion glasses were added. This is, uh, this is definitely creeping everybody out, ready? Ah, I'm a minion. Look at this. That's really scary. They're calling these silly glasses. I don't think the word silly is what I would use to describe this. <gasps> you know what this looks like? You guys remember Buffy the Vampire Slayer? And there's that episode with the things that float down the hallway. They're like, ah, that one. That's what it looks like. No, no bueno. I'm leaving. It's too uncomfortable. No, nothing caught my eye. Thank you for your hard work, but I'm scared I'm leaving. Run away! No words of spudgy. Ah, uh, no, I don't like it. Maggie's like, I love these glasses. No, they're terrifying, right? Rebecca G, more like super stone glasses. Yeah, the red ones, there was definitely like kind of a scary looking over stoned look happening there. Okay, so, gah, pressing all the buttons. I have all the stuff that I need to put away, give to other people. Oh, what does this look like? That's very, that's very funny. Um, to give to other people, and then we can start digging things up. How does this work? Oh, you have to put it against something, I guess. So what I want to do is work on that front of my house there, that area to make a garden, like uh, make it more comfy, like a, um, a cafe. So let's head over here. If anybody has any better way uh, to do this, then wait, did I give sure? I did, yeah. Please let me know. So what I'm about to do, what are we playing? Lynn just shopped in. We're playing Animal Crossing. Um, I'm going to be changing this area here, moving it kind of like over a bit and then I think paving a bit to make a cafe area. That's what I want to have like a little cafe area. But I'm wondering if I should work on that or if I should work on, oh, he's out. I haven't been able to give Rooney anything yet because he's still a bit too new. Cotton candy stall. Someone's been cooking al fresco. There's something special about a meal grilled up outdoors. Ah, yes. Would I call cotton candy a meal? It's a questionable meal, but sure. Let's call it a meal. <laughs> That's amazing, I don't know if it's a meal. Um, so yeah, I can do a cafe there, or I can do a cafe in a different part of the island. So any thoughts, anybody? Um, I'm gonna keep the tatami. I'm gonna keep the tatami. I'm just going to move everything over. Cause like when you walk up, it kind of just goes like, oh, right in your face. So I kind of just want to shove it all over. All right, let's just start. No, let's just start by picking things up. We're gonna pick things up and we're gonna move things over. This is my Animal Crossing achievement cake that I got. I don't think there's a uh, particularly faster way to do this. JTML1 says, hey Martina from Toronto, Ontario. How are you? Sassy Mysterious Chicken, Jason AK Wilder. Um, hello fellow Torontonian, I am doing well. We are about to create a cafe in front of the um, Nook's Cranny, or as we call it, the Nookie Shop, in which we do it all for the Nookie. I'm gonna tatami, tatami mat everything down on the other side and, um, and dig up some of my veg farm and like move it. I think I should start it from here and like tatami it out this way. I think that'll be a little bit, a uh, little bit cozier. I'm absolutely gonna run out of room, I think. Okay. Cafe next to the shop makes sense, right? And I love the little stove nearby. It's all warm and cozy. So when the winter time hits, for those of you that have never played Animal Crossing, um, the leaves are falling now because it's autumn in Japan. If I was in a different time zone, it may not be autumn. Like if I was playing in Australia, I think you guys are heading into the summer soon, right? You're coming out of winter, so spring. So 
Okay, we're gonna swap with something I don't need and then I'm just gonna casually drop these. Okay, no, <laughs> I just wanted to kick the hole. So I think I'm gonna lay down all the stuff over here and then just pick it up afterwards. Does that make sense? I feel like that makes sense. I feel like there's definitely an easier way to do this and I just don't know how. Because I'm gonna pick these up in a minute and, and move them over, right? First anniversary cake. Guys, look, it's because I had a first anniversary on the island. Isn't it awesome? So cute, right? Okay, drop it. It's like talking to a dog when they eat something and you're like, drop it! Put your hands in their mouth. So no we put anything here. What about here? Drop it. This is cute too. Now, you see the shape of it? Some very clever, clever, clever Animal Crossing players put a design onto this cake and turn it into a hat and then they have hat shops. And I was like, that's amazing. It's so clever. And... Okay, we're gonna keep going. Tumbling out of bed. Hey Martina, I'm almost off to work. Yeah. All right, I hope you enjoy this um, company in the morning before you head off to work. How long is your shift today? Is it a long one? That's the question. Jack says, it's a long time since I thought about Limp Biscuit. Yes, you missed an entire uh, scene with me singing about I did it all for the nookie, but for the bells. And I shan't repeat myself because I didn't plan it. Now it's already on the internet forever for everyone to hear. And I can never take it back. <gasps> you know what else I forgot, you guys? I got uh, my very first um, like fencing, like really cute fencing. So maybe I could put some fences here, but I just don't like fences because I like to kind of free run around my island. And this is enough room here. I'm gonna pave this area. I'm gonna do tatami to here, I think. Um, and then here can be like the garden on the edges, which might be nice, I think. Ah, I'll just dig them up while I'm here. So this is what we mean by you can not do anything quicker. And so it's a bit of like a Zen game in the sense that you can't just like quickly you know, I'm gonna wipe out this whole area and then get started. It's like, no, nope. I'm gonna dig up every single pumpkin sprout, every single one of them, just by hand. Just buried again for now, y'all. Uh, um, yes, uh, Bradley, this is a puppy. This is uh, my little spudge appreciation area. This puppy is super cute. I really like him. The puppy that comes inside of here is really scary. Isn't that scary? <laughs> what is the, what in the world? Watch. I guess you can't do it when you're zoomed in. I thought that was really scary and that is absolutely not what um, Spudgy was like. But yeah, so this is a little, little spudgy area. It's like a blue and white flower area. And I've got a little spudgy flag over here. And for those of you that don't know, Spudgy was my wonderful, lovely dog. Um, he has passed away, but I have a little tattoo of him there. That's the Spooji. Oh, Spooji. And Mimer's over there. And uh, he was a very, very good, hilariously stubborn personality dog. He was like a Shiba where they, you don't own them. You don't own these dogs. They don't do things for you. You do things for them. Like they have their own little strong personalities and there's no, you know, there's no changing that kind of thing. Hello, Huigude. I'm, I'm, uh, oh, Weigure. I think that says Weigure, but it's so far away. I'm trying to read the Korean. I look squinting. Um, hello, why? Hello, hello. Yeah, it's pretty ominous, right? I find it a little bit terrifying. Story Ann says, you can also try the cleanup island designer to move a whole area items into the recycling. So if you clean something up, I've been too scared to press the button. Does it um, put them into the recycling bin in the office? And then can I collect them back again? Because like, what if I don't want to clean everything up? What if I just want to move it, right? It just seems like a bit scary to me to just like clean everything up. Mimpy, Spudgy's an icon iconic guy, we love him. Yeah, he is a wonderful little Spudgy. <gasps> you use the Spudgy voice with your students? That's amazing. Spudgy had a very sassy little voice and um, 
I always, I always like talk like Spudgy by myself, which is hilarious. I'll cook something and be like, I don't know if I should do this. And Spudgy will be like, you know, I don't know. It seems like we're doing the right thing. And I'm like, do you think so? He's like, yeah, I'm gonna just give it a try. Why not? It's Spudgy. So he's got this very good little like, uh, yeah, sassy little voice that I like. Spudgy. Yes, we are gonna start construction actually. I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Helmet please. It's on. Okay, now the question is, do I, I'm just gonna kick this over. Do I first pave the ground and then put tatami on top of it? Because that's what I've done here. I think that's what I should do. I think I should first pave it, right? Like put down a wooden brick, like the brick path that I have here. What's the wooden one look like? Is this the wooden one that I'm using? Yeah, so I think I should extend it. That way it's kind of like a natural extension of the front part, right? I think so. Silent Grace said, I had a Shih Tzu Pekingese and he reminded me of Spudgy so much. So stubborn yet also so, so brain empty if you just took random pictures of him. <laughs> that kind of um, cute, they had these like pokey looking eyes, like their eyes always kind of bulged in a way, like a goldfish, they had like these, goldfish bulging eyes but there's a girl on youtube called the girl who the girl with the dogs i think and she grooms dogs and she groomed um a shih tzu and it was just the funniest commentary sure are you gonna stand here the whole time buddy yeah you don't see that i'm doing anything you're just gonna stand there the whole time you are aren't you sure would do that I do voices for my clients too. It makes their days. They also love the stories I have from your videos. That's wonderful to hear. <laughs> a spudgy D&D &D character is an incredible idea. Yes, uh, I know someone did a spudgy D&D &D character and um, also someone painted a little memer bard, I think, like a little tiny mini one it is amazing. Uh, yeah. I think making, doing voices and stuff is really fun because it just has a different, um, you, you, your dog or your pet can just be there, right? But if you give them a personality that matches their attitudes and stuff, then it's like you have a relationship with them as opposed to it just being like an item or a thing or something that, you know, I like that feeling, like even with Kogi, like Kogi and I have, you know, little like wee 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 talks with each other. And it kind of puts me in check sometimes. Like if I'm like, oh, I don't know if I should wear this, it doesn't look great. And then Kogi will be like, wee 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 wee. And I'm like, thanks Kogi. I will have more self-confidence and not talk badly about myself anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like having a little uh, uh, a BFF on your side because you shouldn't say things to yourself that you wouldn't say to your friend, you know? You'd never say to your friend, oh, I think you look fat or you look ugly. You'd never say that to someone, right? And so you shouldn't say it to yourself, but we often do. We, we always say negative things to ourselves. So I like Kogi and Spudgy and Memers were there to kind of like tell me that I should not be doing that. Maggie Delight, my dog has a Southern accent. He's a Southern de de uh, Democrat. <laughs> oh my gosh. Larnell Cross, okay Martina, I gotta go make myself dinner, but have fun building your cafe and making a garden. Thanks for the live stream. You should consider voice acting. I don't, I think I am voice acting uh, through this actually. Um, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, pretty much. And Larnell, you're gonna go make dinner, but I have a feeling, uh, cause your name, unless it's a fluke, I did a podcast with a Larnell Cross. And so I'm thinking it's the same Larnell. We did the um, autism, oh, I can't remember the name perfectly. I'm so sorry, but we did a podcast uh, and uh, we recorded it, I feel like it was in May or something. So I think that this is the same Larnell, but I'm not sure. So if you're already gone, I'm sorry, but yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, self-confidence buddy, right, Chris? It's like, it's really just yourself, you know, uh, making sure you're not talking badly, but at the same time, you know, round it off, nice. This will just keep the weeds from growing in. So that's something else that I've learned, which is that having um, having stuff down on the ground keeps weeds from growing in. <laughs> Plus one with Martina voice acting. The autistic delicacy. Thank you so much, Larnell. We talked about food and we discussed also um, my hosts that were up for the show, right, Larnell? And you guys have... Uh, autism and so we discussed the different ways that we get through life and food and music we talked about so much stuff actually i've been doing some really interesting podcasts lately i appreciate everyone reaching out to me and if you do reach out to me through email or online on instagram um in the dms and stuff my dms are i don't actually know if everyone knows this because i guess it depends on the amount of messages you get 
If you have a lot of messages coming in, you end up having these three different folders. It's like primary, general, and then the inbox of doom. And it's like maxed out. So I have to go through the inbox in order to read the new messages. And then when I want to reply, I have to add it to my general folder. And then when I reply to people, we can exchange conversation. But I also get spam and like, you know, offers from work that of people that are just blanket sending out messages to people. So you gotta like delete them. It takes a really long time. So sometimes I'm tardy and um, tardy as in slow. Is that still used anymore or have I said something terrible? Anyhow, slow to respond. <gasps> it might be a horrible word I just realized. Oh my gosh. Reverse all that. I am slow to respond to people. There you go. Used a word that might be like a needs to be marked out of my vocabulary forever. Um, and that's only because I just get too many messages, but I do try to respond. So if you're diligent, we can get together and do podcasts. Exactly. Mimp J, what was it? Um, Fiona said, can you narrate my life? Uh, that would be quite funny. Oh, thank you for the link, Larnell. I just see it now. Theampliverse.com slash the dash autistic dash delicacin. Yes. Yeah, Spudgy had amazing blue fur. Okay, so I'm thinking that in this space, I put a tatami mat down. I've only built out to here to prevent the weeds from coming in, but at the same time, if you can't really see it, well, maybe I can lay something down. Maybe I can. Um, Jalissa says, sorry if this has been asked at, at, at NASM, at NASM, maybe. But what do you think about collaborating with other YouTubers living in Tokyo? Uh, I am not against collaborating with other YouTubers, but a lot of YouTubers don't necessarily live near each other and people have different things that they're doing, like different ideas of what they want to do. Uh, so, you know, you don't really, I mean, for personally for me, I don't want pe to feel like I'm being used by other people. And I don't think people want to be used by other people too, where it's just like, let's do something together so that, you know, we can get more views off your viewers. Like I don't want people to feel that way. So I think that if you like naturally get to know people and then you decide like my friend Rachel, like Rachel and June, we got to know each other in Korea and then in Japan and naturally started to make some videos together. Um, but like if you don't know the person that well, then it just kind of feels like a little hollow, you know, like you're just doing for likes or back and forth. And I'd like to know the person and and, you know, chat with them and stuff if I do something like that. But other people have their own groups of friends and circles and stuff that they're doing. So they may not have time or they might already have a different plan. So I think that happens a lot as well. So that, yeah, I just think that they, they're busy and yeah. And for me, like I already have enough um, on my plate just dealing with um, EDS and life. So I'm enjoying my slow moving schedule. It's not really slow at all, but I am enjoying the schedule that I've made for myself and the filming that I'm doing, but I wouldn't be against it, you know, but I just right now have, have to focus on not uh, being exhausted all the time and overdoing things myself. Is everyone just gonna walk all over my cafe? Is that what's gonna happen? I'm gonna be trying to do this and I think it's gonna be happening this way. Bird flop, etymology from an earlier, from French tardif, from late, from the Latin tardius, slow sluggish of obscure origin. Yes, that's exactly what I was trying to say. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's just a word that I'm used to saying for meaning like I'm late or something. And then I thought about the etymology and I was like, I really hope that that's not um, something really negative now, but just in case it could be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and not say that. Angel Flounder, that's how I'd feel about working with other folks. I'd wanna know them well enough that it's worth putting in time to collab. Yeah, I mean, I think that if you're, if you're on the, the grind, right? Like if you're grinding as a YouTuber or a Twitcher or I don't know if Twitch people can collab, can they? But if you're, if you're kind of like pushing, pushing, pushing then, and you have young youthful energy, then maybe it makes sense. But for me, I, I, for me, how I feel is I have my own quirky personality. I am my own way that I am and it may not suit everybody. So if I collaborate with somebody else, it doesn't necessarily mean that their audience is gonna go, oh, I really like this person. Um, they might just be like, you're collaborating with this person, maybe I'll subscribe. But I kind of don't mind organically getting to know new viewers that are like, this is really exciting to me when I see someone go, oh, I just found this Japanese breakfast video and like, you know, you're quoting all these movie quotes and it's so funny, you know, I'm totally subscribing because we get on, like it's like you found somebody and now you kind of are like, oh, these are my people. But if you're on someone else's channel, you can sometimes uh, come across as like bossy or over the top, like I'm very talkative. So I'm pretty sure a long time ago, um, Chris Broad, we were doing a live stream together for the YouTube space. 
it was his kind of like live stream and there were YouTubers with him. And I was just trying to keep the conversation going like I normally do. And then in the comments afterwards, it was like, who's this girl? She's so annoying. She's talking over Chris all the time, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, like it just comes across as your, they don't, they don't know you. So you're just like, yap, yap, yap for them. So, you know, I think I've had enough of that kind of response. Like you don't want to hear people talking badly about you ever, you know, but if you're doing it live, it can be really like, oh, you know, disheartening. And then you start second guessing yourself. And uh, so eh, for now I'm pretty comfy with, you know, me just, me just being me, having my slow life, you know? Your dog is barking in his sleep. Let me squeeze past here. Larnell, I'm just gonna unspam your message on YouTube that came up, I just realized. But yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, um, different audience want different things. Yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, what's it called information there that just came out. But but I think it's different for everybody. Like some people, it can be really exciting to meet new people, and and uh, and yeah, and so it doesn't feel like anything's going to be stressful about that. But I think I've I think I've had enough uh, experiences now. Okay, so I'm going to do what somebody told me last live stream, which was brilliant. They said put a garbage pail down. And then you can use it to throw out stuff you don't want, such as flowers. Now, normally I would never toss out a flower, but my pink ones are rare. Uh, but because I have so many of these, I can just kind of toss them out. I'm going to toss those out. Okay, now this is going over here. Let's see if we can make this work, y'all. I like the way that it looks um, when it's flipped around. It kind of just looks like a store desk, right? Why won't you? Why won't you flip? There we go. Literally, all my Animal Crossing peeps are just like <laughs> showing up and walking around. <laughs> this is exact timing. Mim says, I'm sorry, Martina, I didn't know that happened to you. Oh, that's okay. You know, I mean, also like nothing against, nothing against men when I say this at all, but sometimes being a woman who's like really confident and chatty um, can be really annoying to uh, people that are male and not into women being that chatty. Of course, there's girls that don't like chatty people too, but depending on your audience, there can be a lot more commentary on what they want and what they don't want. So. I think that was kind of the case, um, what happens and nothing against Chris because Chris is not, uh, Chris is not like that at all. Like I know Chris and he's not like that, but you know, it's something that you just have to kind of deal with on the internet. Um, a lot <laughs> you get, you get very thick skin over time. Okay, Kyle, you are kind of all up in my place right now. Serving cart. Now, now I'm trying to figure out, you know what I think I should do? I think I should pave this little area here these flowers because I'm gonna put this down right yeah definitely oh hi Maria says I've noticed that chat can be quite demanding yeah just depending on the on the depending on um, the people that you're chatting with right so like with this community I absolutely love uh, everybody here has lots of real life conversations and we discuss different things and we're quite positive or sometimes it's okay to be negative about stuff as well but it's not like you know um one particular stream of thought everybody's kind of like real is what i like um but when you visit someone else's live stream and you're not the main person it can be uh people just say things you know so it's kind of insane ellen fields i can't believe i've made a live stream after eight years of watching eee! welcome we are making a cafe right now that's what i'm doing you know Am I done for building now? No, I'm not built, not done. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of pavement down for my, um, maybe I should make it like one little stone thing right here. This might look so stupid. Cause I'm gonna, it looks so stupid. <laughs> but uh, what can I put down there? Cause I'm gonna put the stove there, right? Mm, what would go underneath an oven? Stone maybe? like a little stone path or something. 
something wooden. Christmas is coming soon, so maybe if I lay down like a snow thing here, it'll look really cool when winter comes because the oven will be on it. But yeah, maybe I'll try this. Maybe I'll try this. Let's see how it looks. So imagine that there's gonna be snow all over the, all around. So it will probably match the snow when it comes is what I'm thinking, right? Raquel says, hi Martina, I really do enjoy your live streams and it's okay to be talkative and just to be your awesome Martina. Yeah, I think it's important to be yourself. I think it can be really hard for people who go through, um, you know, a hard, if you're already dealing with low confidence issues, which everyone struggles with at some point in your life, it's very bad for people. That's why being online can be hard, but I've always been a very confident person um, because I always feel like you're just who you are. And if people don't like you for that, then it's kind of like, oh, okay, because one of my favorite quotes is, um, you can't expect everyone to like you because you don't like everyone. Like, you, you don't like everyone in the world, so they can't like you, you know? So it's not particularly personal. Sometimes they make it personal by saying mean things, but I don't know, I always just felt like, well, I'm the way that I am, which is why I was always like wearing Halloween costumes every year to the end of high school, <laughs> which my friends were like, oh my God, grow up. And I was like, uh, you need to grow up. If you still like Halloween costumes, you still keep wearing them. You need to be happy with what you love, you know? So <laughs> I was always a bit odd. So hello, Jake, bro. Wait, bro, Brock, bro. Yes. Right. So, all right, Elmira, you must be in Australia or New Zealand then. So your island's going to be turning summery soon, right? Yeah. Okay. Tommy's down. Okay, that's fine. So now I'm going to, my brain was like, what was I doing? I'm gonna lay down the serving cart. And where should we put the serving cart? I love how it wheels, by the way. Originally I had them like together to create this kind of uh, space, but I don't know, maybe it needs to go up by the stove over here. Right? Cause you can put stuff on top of it. So I can put like, this can be kind of like the station afterwards where you go to get milk and stuff. Okay. All right. Let's see what I got in my pox skits. We have menu chalkboard, log bench, and tea set. Okay. Log bench, maybe over here. Oh, she just sits on it. <laughs> okay. So log bench over here, maybe to, to lay down more cakes and stuff. We'll see how it looks. If it looks silly, then I will not leave it there. Cause it also might look good on the other side, right? No. I'm gonna swap it for something I don't need right now. Like a freaking fossil, y'all! JD21, here with an important message. Drink water, please. I'm gonna go drink water right now. I'm gonna first throw away uh, a pile of maple leaves. I'm gonna go over here. In fact, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do some stretching with Rooney. We should all do some stretching. Now, oh! We've got raiders. We've got raiders coming in exactly when I'm about to, um, to, to get up, drink water and do some stretching. Hello raiders. If you're welcome, thank you for the rehydration. Um, this was an excellent uh, rehydration idea for everyone. Look, ready? Here I go. I've got this here. I'm about to drink my water. I'm going in for it. Ah, wonderful. I'm going to do some group stretching. If anybody is capable of popping up and doing um, some stretching, and then join along. Also, this happens in Japan. It is not a joke. It is actually real. You'll see people in the park. I'm gonna get up. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Everything hurts. It's fine. Now, wait a second. Oh no, I can't do it because I don't have my Joy-Con. I'm just gonna make a little, um, where is it? No, I don't wanna wave goodbye. I like how my character was like, no, we're not gonna stretch, bye. I'm like, excuse me. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna stretch. Uh, so for those of you who have EDS, 
Stretching is extremely important. Um, you'd think it wouldn't be because we're already stretchy. But no, your hips come out, everything comes out. Ugh, look at my head. Stretching my back. Ugh. Pulling my hips back in and I'm gonna have some more water. If that was a water raid, that was pretty amazing. Um, Giselle says, question from the complete ignorance about this game. Why is the furniture or floor being built before the walls and ceiling? Ah, okay, so you can't actually build a house. You can get the house and you kind of upgrade the house as you go, but you can get stuff to put into the house. So you don't actually build a house. So what I'm doing is trying to create an outdoor cafe so that people can show up and um, sit outside in the cafe, like my users in my neighborhood and stuff that are on here on my island. All these people on my island are not people playing, but they are automated from the computer and they all have personalities and you can get to know them. So that's what I'm trying to do. I've never seen a water raid before, Nesh Nesh, by the way. Mm. Mm. Very nice. Okay, here we go. Rolling on back. Am I centered? Eh, there we go. Okay, we're up. So back over here. So I don't know if this looks great here. Maybe it needs to um, go by like the tree area here, but can you get by? Oh, if the bench is here, you can't get by. I also have like a lot of like cozy chairs and stuff that I could put instead of this. Oh no, it's a dreaded time period where you've got too much in your pockets and so you can't actually do anything. I'm gonna put this over here. This should be milk, I think. Yeah, it's the milk. Maybe I could put it by. <laughs> eee, welcome back to Animal Crossing Streaming Martina. Hello, Brian QQ. <laughs> Say Pinecone says, you can use buttons, you don't have to use your Joy-Con. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, Emma says, hello everyone, I'm currently crocheting a Howl's Moving Castle sweater. <gasps> That's amazing. Howl's Moving Castle is probably my favorite of the Gibbs. Uh, and interestingly, that's the one that he didn't actually write. Uh, it's written by uh, Diana, and I completely forgot her name now. And somebody sent me the book a long time ago, and I read it on an airplane, and then I just read it again and again, and it's such a good book. And obviously the anime really brings it to life in a way, um, but it's just such a wonderful, cozy story. And I really relate to Sophie because she ends up looking old, uh, but she's actually like a young woman. And, and so I kind of feel that whole feeling of looking old and <laughs> when, when you're younger because of UDS and stuff. So wait, these are baked potatoes, aren't they? They're baked potatoes. What does it look like exactly? Does this, what does this shirt look like is what I'd like to know. Kai bai bo. I'm guessing that's Kai Baibo88 says, Hi Martina, long time fan here, like 12 years. So good to see you here on Twitch. Hello. I'm also dual streaming on YouTube. So there are YouTubers too. Black Hyatt the Third said, the book is so different. Yeah, the book is amazing. It has all these like extra details. Um, oh, Moggy Delight says, you do not look old. I should explain, it's not that I look old. It's that the whole concept is that she looks old on the outside and when I get up and have like my hip problem or I have to use my cane or I have to use my shoulder, it's like, it makes me feel like, oh, I'm like 80 years old. But on the inside, I'm young, which is like Sophie. And then slowly as you get through the, the anime and the, and the book as well, Hal could always kind of like see her for being young and she gets younger and younger looking uh, and her hair stays kind of white and silver. Uh, and eventually, you know, he, they, they kind of like, I'm not gonna spoil it all. But the point is, is that it's like that concept of like looking old on the outside, but being young on the inside. And the more Sophie acts old, the more old she got. And so that's the whole thing that I'm trying to go against for myself. Just because I have EDS doesn't mean that I'm old and that I need to tell myself that. Again, I need to have some nice self, self talk, positive self talk and that kind of stuff. So um, that's what I like about it. No, do you want a piece of cake on the ground? Okay, this lamp might be in the middle. But yeah, it's such it's such a nice um, it's such a nice story. Place the item. There we go. 
We're only old on the inside, Stormy Zebra, exactly. <laughs> Why world? Why world? Did I want to pick that cake? cake cake? No, I did not want to place it. Don't touch it, Martina. Okay, I think this. Where's the other cake? There was another cake, right? Where has it gone? Where has my other cake gone? Bottled beverage, table lamp, and mini chalkboard. Remember, I had the uh, tenth and one anniversary Animal Crossing thing. Where did it go? Okay, here we go. I like it better this way. Now, do you think I should kind of have it like slightly off to the side, right? Move the garbage can. That way it's kind of like, um, like if you were approaching it, you're like, oh, there's a cafe here. I should go with that, right? Like my villagers chatting with each other. I love it. Oh, Maggie says, my partner has kidney failure and he got it when he was 21 and says that he feels old too. So I kind of understand that. But you aren't old and you don't look it even if you feel it. So yeah, it's, I think it's the idea that we're told a lot that, I think we're often told that old things only happen to older people like knee pain or kidney failure or other, or the way that you look, right? But it's not true, you know, especially since meeting this community online, people all over the world are suffering from different things. And so I don't think we should be saying that like, you know, wheelchairs are for disabled or old people. That's not true. Wheelchairs can be for people who can get up out of a wheelchair as well that need them for supporting themselves from an injury or exhaustion, you know, like if you have a lung problem or a heart problem or EDS, right? Uh, I think we need to kind of start shifting that. And I think we've, we've been doing it, like not just our community, but I think there's been a big change now. You know, you see canes now that are like sparkly or clear or LED, like we're starting to understand now that we're not gonna just look at people and judge them and say, you know, obviously we still have people that don't understand it and they can be ignorant. But again, I'm a kill it with kindness kind of person. When somebody acts like, oh, I found my cake. When somebody acts like, you know, I shouldn't be using a handicapped spot uh, for my car if I had a pass, right? Which I don't, cause I'm not driving here. Or to get out of a seat on a train because I don't look sick. I tend to use it as like a, oh, like, oh, I'm really glad you said that because you know, my condition is hidden and it's really confusing. Would you like to know more about it? Like I kind of go like, oh, what a great opportunity as opposed to feeding the hatred, which is obviously challenging because you want to be like, you don't know me and what I've gone through. But instead you're like, nah, nah. but you know, sometimes kindness is a better way for someone to listen to you. And that's the point. The point is that I want them to listen and understand that there are invisible illnesses as opposed to be mad at me or mad at the idea that how dare someone talk back to them. So, so that, that's kind of my goal um, because the whole point is for them to no longer do that to somebody else, especially somebody else who might be having a really rotten day. You know, the good days and the bad days, the bad days are the ones where it's much harder to handle something like that. Hmm, this life is just not looking good here, is it? Good evening, Zion Maras. Cake secured, Bradley, exactly. Uh, I was like in the middle of a conversation with you guys and I saw the stones and then I saw that there was the cake and I was like, <gasps> the cake, if I don't grab it now, I won't remember. Oh my gosh, first case Sol Soli was like, the other cake's on the ground, but I had not, uh, wasn't looking at the comment section that would have helped me add a lot faster. Next time I will look to you guys for answers. Okay, so then I could put the lamp here. I also have so many other options for putting stuff here now that I've got this little setup. I mean, it's not the greatest looking cafe. Maybe I'll pull this out a little bit. No, I like it better here. How about I get some tatami seats, like the backless chairs? Like I have a whole bunch of them. What about, maybe I should get another bench here, huh? And make it look kind of more, I've got seating and stuff like that, right? I could definitely do seating. Let's see. And Weber says, I'm glad you do not give into the hate. Killing with kindness is the way. Yeah, I mean, it's very easy to give into hate because obviously when hateful things happen, like what's been happening now in the States, 
when hateful things happen, you're obviously, you feel angry because why wouldn't you feel angry, right? Um, but the problem is that I don't know anybody because if you flip it around, imagine if somebody yelled at you for something that you didn't understand. Like if you asked somebody something or said something wrong, like for example, in the stream, when I said, you know, oh, I was running late, I was tardy. And that's a phrase that I've known my whole life. But then I thought it through and I was like, oh, maybe that's no longer something you should be saying. Like maybe it's kind of like a slur. I wasn't sure and so none of you guys were like f this cancel that stream or like people were like oh here's the definition of it or here's this or that and so then i'm like okay mental self note to self i'm not going to use that word anymore because i'm not sure where it's from implications blah 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 right but if people start screaming at you you feel like scared and you don't want to you just kind of agree because you, you feel scared but you don't actually change i think the point is change right so if somebody is cornering someone on a bus because they think they don't look disabled enough um I think it's important for them to know that not everybody looks disabled on the outside. You know, there might be something else going on and we don't want them to not learn the lesson about that. I want them to understand it by going, oh, I'm not gonna do this to someone else again. So that's where I think um, the killing with kindness comes in personally, because then they might actually learn something. They may not. And you know, and it's not necessarily your lesson to teach them, but it will be a better, and the people around you are going to be listening, right? They're going to be listening in. Oh, Chris Ham, welcome to the King Kogi airship. Uh, you've joined as a crewmate. Uh, thank you so much for joining the YouTube memberships. Make sure you check out the community tab because the community tab has all the different things that you might've missed out on as a crewmate. So you can catch up on all the Martinez uh, captain creations. Um, and I've got like drawings and wallpapers and recipes and music that I played. So please go check that out, right? We're looking for stuff right now that we're gonna put in the cafe, guys. That's what we're doing in my, in my selection here. I have so much stuff as well that I need to probably sell. Oh, what about a rug? Hmm, hmm? But you don't put a rug in a tatami room, but maybe the entrance way so people can like wipe their feet. They can wipe their tootsies. We'll, we'll see what it looks like. It may not work. And the winter's coming, so maybe the frozen chairs will look. I have a frozen bar in the winter time too. It's very cool. You think stools or like a bench, you know? Ah, uh, hmm. Okay, I'm gonna put this in my pockets and the corner seat might look cool. There might not be enough room. I'm gonna take some of these stools. I am absolutely running out of room in my pockets. Yes. Rugs don't work outside. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, Rabbitine said, I started using the term visibly able. Ah, I use differently abled. I love differently abled um, because I am abled. I am just differently abled. Sometimes I am very able-bodied, just like super, totally no problem. And other times, I'm not able, like even just going up a hill or up a staircase can be really insanely exhausting for me, um, for a lot of us. And I, I'll be like totally ganky and happy and on the ground. And then suddenly it's like, I just can't do anything because I'm climbing up the stairs and it's exhausting. So it definitely depends on the person and the situation. So I like, I like being differently able, but again, own your, own your own comfort for what you want to say. If you don't like differently abled, don't take it away from someone else. If you have a nickname for yourself that you think is funny, that someone else finds offensive, but you, you find it like uh, it empowers you, you know, you go for it. So it's something for you that is important, right? Oh, Chris Ham, thank you. Sending you some Canadian hugs from Nova Scotia. Thank you for being so amazing, Martina. Thank you so much for super chatting. Nova Scotia, that's where my um, East Coast family's from, Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. And um, they're straight out of Corner Brook. So if you're near Corner Brook or Halifax, uh, Chicken Burger was my jam. Hopefully you can visit Chicken Burger. I know it's still going because I looked it up during COVID because I thought that Chicken Burger was the perfect place for taking things out and it was. And thank you so much for super chatting SS as well. We got a Shiba going, hiya. You got to put patterns on the ground, huh? Mm-hmm. Andy Lad 701 says, with both my hands and knees slowly falling on me and also suffering from Crohn's since mid thirties, sometimes I feel extremely old physically. Mm -hmm. But mentally though, I still feel like I did in my twenties and it took some, a lot of time to come to terms with it. Yes, uh, exactly that. It takes time to come to terms with it and everyone is at their own speed. I have come to terms with it 
I definitely went through uh, an angry, like, why me stage. I think one of the hardest things, and this sounds silly, but it's not that silly. I, I just corrected myself so because I'm like, it wasn't silly, Martina, but I felt silly. I cried when I had to put my shoes away that I couldn't wear anymore. Like, I just couldn't wear anything with, like, a heel. Um, constantly kept ankle folding, falling down. It just caused so many problems because I broke my ankle. Saving those puppies from a burning building, as we know. The burning orphanage. That's how I broke my ankle. Not dancing in a club, jump dancing. Anyhow, after I broke my ankle from rescuing those puppies, it was never the same and my tendons never recovered and then my arch collapsed and all this other stuff. My knees hurt from in heels and I cried a lot. Like, I remember taking my shoes out of the closet and putting them into this bag and just being like, I can't wear these anymore. Like, I'm so young, this isn't fair. And like, it was a really grieving process. So I think that going through the changes you have it is something that involves grief as well. You know, you gotta be like, this sucks, it's not fair, and it isn't fair. It isn't, life is not fair, it's not dealing you a fair hand. Um, but the key, I think, is not staying in it for too long. Like, if you stay in the not fair stage, it doesn't help you any, anymore. It doesn't help you, you know? You're just feeling sad and unfair, and you get mad at other people for doing things, and it hurts you. It's like taking poison to hurt your enemies, right? Like, I'll show you, take some poison. It doesn't mean you can't go through it. I think if you're going through it, you're going through it, but don't stay there too long. It's not a good place to stay in, in my personal opinion. It's not a good place to stay in. Why do I keep throwing things down and not knowing how to move them? Please don't sit, you're not done working. You got a cute little hat and you're gonna keep going. Work, work, Martina, work and work, Martina. Nope, that's you sitting down, <laughs> that's you sitting down again as the person sitting in a chair while making the other person. <laughs> mm. Toasted Biscuit says, I was super depressed and disappointed in life when I got my HEDS diagnosis, even though I was fighting it for long and knew it was coming. Yep. Uh, Martina, EDS is something that you can get diagnosed through DNA tests or is it a diagnostic test? Um, natural selections, it depends on the kind you have. So if you have HEDS, which is the hypermobile um, EDS, there is no DNA test yet for that. So when the EDS societies and around the world and stuff do fundraisers or things to try to raise money, it's to, it's to help the scientific community work to figure out where it is on the DNA level. They haven't been able to identify it. However, there are other varieties of EDS and you can get the DNA testing done and like a bone sample as well. And then they can tell you right away that yes, you have the DNA code that matches the other kinds like vascular and like all these other ones. For HEDS, you have to go to a doctor that um, is uh, like, I don't know what it's called in the doctor role, like registered as an, an EDS specialist or something. I went to one in Korea, got my diagnosis there, went to one in Japan, got it there. And then in Toronto, I recently went to the new Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome um, like facility in a hospital. It was very exciting for me. And I also got my third diagnosis there. They do a, it was like a two or three hour test. Um, they check your skin, they check your flexibility, um, they find out your family history, they look for the special scarring that's on the bottom of your side of your feet. I was like, what? It's like these little pulples of fat almost. Um, lots of different tests. And then they find out family history. If it's been in the family, you kind of figure it out and then they confirm that you have it. So it requires a lot of, um, it's not just like I'm flexible or, cause you can be flexible and not have EDS because it's a collagen problem, which means it also infects your intestinal tract and your esophagus and your nails, like everything. So it is not just flexibility. Um, and it basically started for me since I was a kid and I just didn't know. So starting at like age 10 was the first time I dislocated my knee, right? And then I dislocated my shoulder and then my shoulder again, and then my kneecap, my patella, like, and you just don't know why I was in sports. So we just assumed it was from sports. Um, but yeah, so basically there's a whole bunch of things they do. And so that's how you, um, oh, a genetic doctor says blue eyed kitten. There you go. Yeah. So Sabrina says the, what are the primary symptoms of HEZS? Does it come on slowly from childhood? Um, for me, it didn't come on slowly. It was simply just, um, constant, uh, inexplainable over the top injuries, right? So when I dislocated my shoulder, I was playing football, American football, and I landed on the track pretty hard. And so I dislocated my shoulder, which made sense with sports. However, it wouldn't heal despite the physiotherapy, this shoulder constantly subluxed and dislocated, but the tendons didn't necessarily tear. And so they were kind of like, huh. 
Then when I was in high school, I went in for like my fourth MRI and they finally, a doctor came in and was like, I'm not your doctor, but I'm pretty sure you have EDS. Uh, we saw you popping your shoulder during like a pre-process when they were injecting the, the uh, dye. And they're like, it's not normal to be able to, to sublux, which is a partial dislocation and relocate it again. So that has been happening my whole life with my fingers, my shoulders, my ribs. As you get older, you begin to understand what it is and how to kind of breathe things back in place a bit, but it also affects your intestinal tract. So, you know, problems with constipation or diarrhea, it goes either way depending. All, all skin rashing, really sensitive skin, skin tearing. I have eczema, I've had allergies for no reason, which comes with like all these other um, conditions. The bottom one is EDS and it's like an umbrella of extra problems. So I was diagnosed for having um, not Crohn's, but IBS. I don't think I have IBS. I think I have EDS and that is what caused my IBS. So I, I, instead of saying that I have all these other things, I, I have EDS, which causes all these other similar things. So um, yeah, that's, that's uh, HEDS. Yeah. Stormy Ann says, would you feel comfortable sharing the name of the doctor you saw in Korea? I'm having trouble getting good care for my HEDS here. I'm really sorry. I don't remember my doctor's name. I went to a hospital. So I went to the Seoul University or Seoul National Hospital or something. And I saw a geneticist there and somebody else, and they were the ones who diagnosed it in which I was able to get medication through them. But the, everyone else there totally sucks. Like they, they took me to the pain clinic and the pain clinic was useless. Uh, they couldn't do any, they were like, oh, here's a hundred milligrams of ibuprofen, which is like a normal strength Advil. So they really didn't get it. Um, so it's quite complicated, right? As you get older, your symptoms will, will change and anything that you hurt will kind of get a little bit on the worst side. So my knees, my kneecaps, my shoulders, my jaw, all these things uh, are worse now that I'm older, kind of feeling arthritic because the bone's been rubbing for so long. So you got to take care of yourself, be a little bit more gentle. And that's where you start the grief process because you're giving up things like snowboarding or sports that you loved or activities that you should be able to do. Like, why can't I dance a whole night? I used to. Well, you can't because your knee hurts too much now. So, you know, fighting things like weight gain because maybe you don't do anything anymore athletic, but then you can't go out and do things athletic because it hurts. So then you try to go swimming and it's all this different stuff. It's like managing. But as you guys know that have it, I'm here to say you can manage. It doesn't mean that it's easy out of a seven day week. I'd say two of those days I spend recuperating from injuries. Five of those days are possible days for work. Uh, one or two of them will be big pain flare days that I either push through uh, or I don't and I struggle with getting things done. And then the other three might be reasonable days that I can possibly do something. If you do something on one of those days, the next day is going to be a recovery day. So it's, it's a quite complex process, but you got to get to know yourself. Um, yeah. And be gentle with understanding that you are not who you might have been before, and that's okay. So yeah, oh, sorry for all that, you guys. Um, thanks for listening in on that. Oh, I see that somebody here is trying to spam, but don't worry, Martina's caught it. <laughs> so lots of people here talking about problems with doctors and stuff, and yeah, it's, it's quite, uh, it is quite complicated, and you definitely, you need to advocate for yourself, but at the same time, you know, you, you need to be able to be okay with rotating through different doctors. Um, I've had doctors that my mom was here for this. When I dislocated my jaw so many times, I had a doctor that literally called everybody in when they found I had EDS. They're like, Hey, come on in here. Look at this girl. Like, like I'm some specimen and like wanted to show people my flexibility and stuff. That wasn't great. Um, that was a sports doctor. So I was like, nah. And um, for me, physiotherapy is the hardest because they need to understand that the whole body's attached. Uh, it's not just like if my shoulder hurts, it's my shoulder. It might be my rib that's popped out and it's pushing against the muscles, causing my shoulder pain. So you need someone who kind of understands that the whole body is connected as opposed to just dealing with that one place. So these are the kind of things you got to kind of learn. <laughs> Wyox is like, thanks for Martina's TED talk. Siri, Siri. Oh, zombie Leone, I love it when doctors say, just lose the weight and you'll get better. In one sense, being uh, overweight as in for yourself, being a particular type of overweight does create more weight on your joints. And so it is problematic in that sense. But on the other hand, uh, a couple years ago, I was at my lowest weight possible. I wasn't eating, I wasn't constantly anxious, very stressed out and unhappy person. 
and I was at my lowest weight and in more pain than I've ever been in because of the stress in my life was causing me to be in this like fight or flight mode all the time, vomiting constantly, burning my throat, ruin my esophagus. But once I put myself in a better position in life and was able to like leave all the stress behind and separate from it, even though I've gotten like a little chubbier than a couple years ago, I am in way less pain. So it isn't just my weight, it's also my mental well-being. So that's that's something that I found interesting, right? Um, yeah, anyways. Okay, so I am putting this here for what reason? Probably to put more food down, right? Or I could just keep sitting on it. That's what you could do. So fine. Stop sitting on things. We're not, we may not keep all this stuff here. I'm just trying to get a vibe for like how the place looks. Like, do we want to have, I don't, think, I don't think the stool matches. The stool is no good. I think this is okay though, because people can come and like, you know, sit here and maybe have something to eat. What else did I bring over? I brought over a stall and so I can't lay this rug down, can I? Someone was saying to me, I can't lay this down, I think. No, I can't. The base up's like, oh man, I got here late. Hi, Martina. Hi. I'm, I'm going to be wrapping up in probably like 15 minutes or so. Um, it is really getting hot in my room. Uh, my, my, my sunlight window is shining in on me and I had um, yogurt for breakfast and I've been drinking a little bit of a protein shake here, but mm, I think I need to eat lunch soon. Sabrina says, I have a differently dis disability and I'm learning to accept that there are days that I just can't do anything but self-care, but that's a valid and productive in its own way. Yeah, um, exactly. So because we're used to hearing about, there's a balloon. Because we're used to hearing about being productive in a particular way is the only way to be productive. Like I must smash and do work every day. Sometimes being productive means um, taking care of yourself by going, whoa, I need to go to the doctor today or I need to relax or I need to go for a swim or I need to sleep in like, oh, this might be really nice for this area. So sometimes that's more productive. Like if I push myself too much, I am crippled for the next couple days. And so why is that productive? How is that productive if I don't take care of myself and sleep well? I think this is better than the other one. In fact, maybe I can put the bench here so people can sit um, or I can add more food to it. No, stop. stop sitting on the bench. Yeah, I'm gonna put more like food and cakes and stuff on this. Chris Haney, after having stomach surgery for a hernia, I, you, very, you learn very well that everything is connected to your belly button and butthole. It's the strangest awareness ever. Oh, for real, your stomach gut is so critical. So what you're eating really affects your body. So if you're eating like real foods and fermented stuff like natto and kimchi and miso and um, sauerkrauts and stuff, keeps your gut bacteria happy. And that can keep you from like rashing or having like outbreaks and all these different things. So eating stuff and putting stuff in your body really does affect you. So sometimes it's tough because you want to eat something like fast food because it might be simple for you to eat because you're exhausted, right? But just eating that fast food that may not have the right nutritional value can then screw up your digestive system. So it's like this balance of like, how do you take care of yourself on days when when days when you're super tired, but you also want to make sure you keep your gut bacteria going and stuff. So I do a lot of pre-planning to make sure I have stuff in my freezer or fridge, or I, you know, I make food in advance and have it ready so that I know I can always have something that's like semi healthy. Um, and by healthy, I don't mean like I'm a health food person. I mean, what's good for my gut bacteria. I think of it like an additional pet in my life. I'm like, Hey guys, how you doing down there? You doing all right? You know, blue eyed kitten. Do you have mast cell activation syndrome too? I am pretty sure I do. So I was mentioning um, before that, that the umbrella in my mind is there's EDS, which is the umbrella. And underneath the umbrella are all these different things like, you know, IBS and, and Crohn's and mast cell activation syndrome and um, fibromyalgia. But to me, I go, it's just EDS. I am allergic to vaccines on and off for no reason. I have allergies that come and go for no reason. My throat will swell, my lips will get hives. I take allergy pills almost on the daily, especially if I'm leaving the house and going somewhere new because I'll probably have an allergic reaction at some point. I hive in rash. None of it makes sense, but mast cell makes sense. Um, besides fermented food, what else can help? Um, this, I mean, 
I was not trying to go to the fridge, but I went to the fridge because I was trying to get food for the for the uh, <laughs> the tables. Um, vegetables, not because it's like a vegetable, but because fiber can like scrub things through. It scrubs through your intestinal tract. So if you have like meat or old food that you've eaten, like you're eating burgers or something, right? And then it's in your intestinal tract and digesting slowly. It can release gas or like rot. So when you eat something um, veggie related, it kind of scrubs it through like a little toothbrush almost. So that's why veg is really important. So I do these green lumpies where I take like kale or spinach and uh, all raw veg, apples, lemons, mint. I cut them up, I wash them and I put them in a little blender and I blend them until they're like pureed. And then I drink that and I'm like, yeah, it's like drinking a salad really fast. So all that kind of stuff. Uh, Bibiana Pasio says eating whole foods helped me lose 10 pounds and not be bloated constantly. Yeah, the bloating, so the gas is because your pet bacteria in your tummy, in your intestinal tract, if they eat something that doesn't have a lot of nutritional value in it or it's quite carby or something, then they fart. It's not really you farting, it's your intestinal tract bacteria buddies farting. And then that creates gas and that creates bloating and, and sodium. And so there's all the stuff that's really affecting your intestinal tract bacteri bacteria, right? So by feeding them good food, then they don't react the same way. Like my whole gas life changed going to Asia. Eating kimchi and eating Japanese food has completely changed the way that I bloat and stuff. But you know, I still have bloaty days as well when it comes to, like I have to be careful, like I can't have a lot of cabbage. Um, cabbage can be quite um, painful and bloaty. So it depends on the type of vegetable you're eating. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. All right, what else are we gonna add to the, I think this will be nice to add and maybe a couple of cups of coffee. This is for putting in the, um, in the cafe. Mm, kagami mochi, songpyeon, that's for New Year's. Um, maybe if I have any more like candles or something. <laughs> Endo, you've caught one of my streams. When I am near the better. Blue-Eyed Kitten says, is your stomach better with Asian food versus Western food? Uh, it actually is. Uh, I find that Asian food, specifically Asian food in, in Japan and in Korea is better, but only because I think everybody here makes their food very fresh. So even when you're in Korea, you're eating like fermented side dishes, all the banchan with every meal. Um, there's not a lot of bread. Uh, portion sizes are much smaller. So just naturally you're eating smaller things, less like saucy covered things. In Japan, I'm eating more like, when I say clean, I mean lacking additional stuff on top, like clean fish and um, meats. Like think about Korean barbecue and Japanese barbecue. You're just grilling a piece of meat and then eating it like with lettuce sometimes. And it can be a lot lower carb, but I think that in Western food, we tend to add a lot more stuff and sauces and things in containers that we squeeze on. And so I'm not sure that that's been made with our health in mind, but it is very delicious. So that's the problem, right? Preservatives, exactly what I was gonna say. Um, there's a lot of preservatives. And so I don't think our gut bacteria is into that. Uh, and I've also noticed that I started um, playing around with a couple years ago, cooking with things like um, almond flour and coconut flour to see what it's like. And so I found that sometimes that um, made for a better uh, food for me uh, to be able to eat something like um, pancakes made out of coconut flour, which are helping scrub things through my system a lot more than just a plain flour, right? And for anyone who's got problems with eating flour to begin with, they probably already are, but Things like that, like swapping out small things, like making almond crust pizza dough or cauliflower stir fried rice instead of rice, like slowly moving things around, right? Nothing wrong with eating spaghetti, Manchia. That's totally fine. I don't think people should be, you know, completely shamed into trying to change their food habits altogether because you won't. It has to be a lifestyle change that can come nice and slow and easy for some of us, right? Some people need that pressure of like switching right away over and other people, it's nice and slow and chill, you know, like you replace one little thing bit by bit. So if you drink a lot of like sugary pops or something, right? Maybe replace that with drinking a juice. If you start then from the pop from the juice, cause juice is still sugary, you can switch that to then, you know, blending your own kind of juice. And then maybe you can switch that to the sugar, like a tea that's really sweet and delicious. And you kind of like slowly make your way through. And then maybe next you're doing soda water with um, lemon and oranges in it. Like you kind of slowly replace something that you might really love rather than it being like an immediate, I think punishment switch. Cause you want it to stick. You don't want it to just, you know, um, 
be a one-time thing that you suffered for for nothing. But I'm pretty happy with this area. Do I love it? I don't totally love it, but I, I am happy that I've moved it over. I think it's in a much better position than before because it was blocking this whole area before, you know? Good night, uh, Gio Maris. Your bed is calling you. Have a great day. Have a good, have a good sleep. Yes, uh, natto can be challenging um, texture-wise because it has the stringiness that's kind of slimy and it can be challenging because it can taste kind of like uh, funky. Um, I think if you're gonna have it for the first time, you need to have it mixed in something like in rice or inside of a roll so that when you're eating it, you're only tasting it first. And then you work your way through the stringy side of it, which now I just don't think about it anymore. I think of it like okra, basically. Ooh, uh. The base up says, if you want to get really creative on Animal Crossing, maybe some custom designs of spudgy memers like they're on the island with you. Yes, um, I have a couple of cushions and uh, my flag, my city flag, what, what's up? There we go. Nope, she's trapped. Oh, I'm sitting on that stupid bench again. The bench wants to, see? I got the spudgy flag, spudgy. I think I'm gonna wrap up my design for now. Nice. Natural sign. I hope you can get to do a video on useful kitchen items. Oh, that's a very smart idea. Oh, so many useful kitchen items to think of. Well, I'm going to switch on off to my sign off outfit here. If you're just joining me now, I am going to be signing off um, because I've had quite a long stream. It's been um, almost three hours now, everybody. Uh, I have to definitely thank Intel and Dell for sponsoring this video. If you joined at the beginning, we went to eCycle Land uh, in which we talked about recycling things like um, cell phones and laptops and computer monitors that you have like lying around. In Animal Crossing world, we have these like rusted parts that we don't know what to do with. So even though we've built a video game that's supposed to be idyllic, we've still managed to make e-waste. So they basically made an island where I could exchange parts for new tech. And so the whole point is to say that we can do this in real life as well. In the links, water <laughs> choking. In the links in the info box, I have um, links that can take you to Nookazon. So if you have rusted parts as an Animal Crossing player, you can trade your parts in and get new tech. Um, you can also visit the island on their Dream Island address. And on top of that, the links will show you from the States where you can exchange your old tech, whether it's like a cell phone or um, a laptop, monitors, things with a plug. Check to see where and how if you're able to change it in. And they will accept things that are not necessarily the name brand of Dell and Intel. They'll accept like all types of tech and you can get credits. Uh, you can exchange it at Goodwill. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So the message is supposed to be, let's not toss our stuff into the landfill and let's just not leave it in our house piling up in a drawer somewhere. So I hope some of you guys do get a chance to do this in real life, which was the whole point. So this is my last uh, sponsored live stream. So really wanted to get that message across at the very end, no matter what. Yeah, so thanks so much uh, Intel and Dell for bringing this to, uh, yeah, it's such an interesting, an interesting way to share this message. It was, it was so well done. The island was incredible if you had the chance to see it. it was, it, it's not something that I'm just saying, like everyone who visited it was like, yeah, it's an amazing island. Time to tuck my character onto bed. This has been uh, such a lovely stream, everybody. We've had so many uh, interesting conversations and thank you to everybody for uh, anyone who super chatted or joined as a new uh, member on King Kogi YouTube or on Patreon. Thank you so, so much. This week, I am heading off on a little mini adventure. I'm going to be going to Osaka, top secret everyone, uh, because I'm gonna be filming a to Tokyo tours for the end of the year because I've already filmed Tokyo tours for November. It's going up probably next week, it's almost done. But because December is the last month in 2022, it's kind of like the end of Tokyo tour series. So I wanted to do something a little special. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, I am, you know, kind of pushing myself, but I, I think you guys are gonna like it because like, First Tokyo tours in Osaka. So Osaka tours, I guess. Yes, so uh, yeah, I hope you like it. I'll probably post up some stuff on the community tab and on Patreon um, just to show some behind the scenes stuff. But uh, good night, everybody. Good morning, everybody, depending on where you're from. Let's go into the big camera mode here. Huh. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so like blown out from the lighting over here, you guys. 
Uh, thank you so much again for streaming, um, for streaming, for coming to my stream. See you on the interwebs uh, and enjoy, uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your night or evening and keep keeping it cool in the King Kogi village and keep being a, a build a ladder person if you're out there struggling with anything. Bye everybody, I'm off to eat some food. Boom, boom, just in case it's nighttime. <laughs>